Starting lineup, Cubs have won eight of their last ten. Jerry Hairston back in the lineup in center. Todd Walker snapped a 12-game hitting streak last night. Lee Ramirez, Barrett, Burnett's in the middle. Jeremy back in right. Cedeno, Merton, and Maddox, a couple of rookies going seven and eight. Take a look at the Reds defensively. Willie Mopeña in left today. Griffey Jr. in center. Austin Kearns getting a start in right field. Friel, Lopez, Aurelia Dunn across the infield. Javier Valentin once again behind the plate for left-hander Eric Milton. Bunted by Hairston. A dandy as he pushes in and nobody covering first. Aurelia couldn't get over there in time, so Hairston with a bunt single to start it. Well, what a great idea by Jerry Harrison, a left-handed pitcher on the mound who falls off to the third base side. Adam Dunn playing out of position at first base today and just puts that bunt in an absolutely perfect location, catching the Reds completely by surprise. Leadoff man is aboard for Todd Walker. Todd went 0 for 4 last night. Again, his 12 game hitting streak came to an end. He hit 373 during the streak. Again, Eric Milton, a guy who has given up 29 home runs already this year. That is sky to center. And it's caught by Griffey. So, with one out, it'll bring up Derek Lee, who's hitting 5. 100 with eight home runs against the Reds. Take a look at Milton's numbers on the season. The 4 and 10 record, it should be pointed out, he won two of his first three starts this season. He's won two of his next 17 starts. 29 home runs. Gave up 43 last year. You have the 29 homers allowed, the most in the majors, and the pitch to Lee. Oh. This is ball one. Derek with a home run in the seventh inning last night. He is in sole possession of all three triple crown categories right now, leading in average home runs and all by himself atop the RBI board as well with 78. One and one on Lee. Cubs are five and three against the Reds, including three and two here. Nine home runs in the series for the Cubs. That's high. Had an opportunity to look at the pitching charts on Eric Milton. Gene Klein's the hitting instructor for the Cubs. Had him available down in the clubhouse today. And they show a right-handed batter. They show a left-handed batter. And there are little dots in the strike zone or around the strike zone showing where Milton pitches against righties and lefties and against the right handers a lot of pitches up and out over the plate like that. There's a fastball that he'll cut in on the right handers occasionally try to sink it away from the right handers a curveball a change up and as we've talked about already he pitches up in the zone and because of that gives up a lot of fly balls almost twice as many fly ball outs as ground ball outs. 3-1 pitch and Derek got under it big time. Slams his bat to the dirt and eventually lands in Lopez's mid. So two outs and it brings up a Ramos Ramirez a cleanup hitter today. Derek frustrated with himself. Thought he had a good pitch to hit right there. Milton will do that intentionally pitching up in the strike zone just a little bit higher than the right handed hitters can handle trying to get those pop up outs. The problem is if he misses his spot by a couple of inches it turns into a long home run. Ball one on Ramirez. You look at the, the monthly numbers for Milton. In April, his ERA was 6.75, went up to 7.29 in May, 8.02 in June. And actually, uh, it hasn't been too bad in July. Three starts of 4.50 earned run average, but you mentioned his struggles. His last 10 starts, 1-5 with a 7.57.
ERA. He has one win since May 28. And here's a guy who signed a big three-year free agent contract in the offseason. Really puzzling. I mean, we talked about it before the ball game started today. Uh, you know, occasionally there will be a signing that just makes you scratch your head. Uh, everybody around baseball knew Eric Milton was a fly ball pitcher. As I mentioned, he gave up 43 home runs pitching in Philadelphia last year. This ballpark very similar to that ballpark in Philadelphia in that it yields a lot of home runs. Milton with a look at Harrison out of the plate. And that's hammered foul by Ramirez. The facing of the upper deck. And we've talked about it throughout this four game series. Uh, it figures to build a pitching staff for this ballpark for 81 games in this ballpark. You better have something that moves toward the ground, either a sinker, a splitter, a sharp late breaking slider, something that you can keep the ball on the ground and hopefully keep it in the ballpark. But fly ball pitchers that work up in the strike zone are not going to have a lot of success pitching here. One two pitch and you see he'll vary his delivery to the plate with a runner at first. He'll use a slide step. He'll go with that big leg kick. And in fact Hairston went back towards first as Milton lifted his right leg and ended up going toward the plate. Two two golfed into center Griffey will dive just can't make the catch Hairston is going to stop at third. So a single for Ramirez and the inning still alive. We've seen this happen a couple times in this series both ways when one of the big power hitters for either team takes a full swing and gets jammed hits a little floater out into the shallow outfield areas it fools the outfielders initially of course everybody plays deep in this ballpark to begin with but junior froze in his tracks momentarily and just couldn't recover in time to make the catch now Griffey a 10 time gold Glover but his last one was in 99 but a good effort out there in center two hits in the inning and now it's Michael Barrett hitting 417 against the Reds this year with one home run. And currently on a seven game hitting streak. Cubs are tied for second in the division, 13 out. They're tied with Houston. Three way tie for third in the wild card with Houston and the Mets, five back of Atlanta. Meanwhile, have been in last place for the last 39 days, but right now just a half game back of the fifth place Pirates, who have lost five in a row. Three and zero. Oh. And consider this: a guy on deck, a left-handed hitter, Jeremy Burnett, but he's four for six with two home runs against Milton. kind of left hander that can that is tough on a left handed hitter his fastball is fairly straight he tries to sink it he tries to cut it but doesn't have a lot of movement big curveball is very slow and easy to pick up out of his hand so doesn't really have a pitch for lefties Here he comes on a three one with Ramirez running and this one will get back behind the Reds dugout back just off the back of the dugout. Handling Greg Maddox today on the hill. Maddox with eight wins. And again, six strikeouts away from 3,000. He'd love to take the mound with a lead here in the first inning. 
Ramirez will be running again. There he goes on a 3-2 pitch, and he'll have to retreat. Really got knocked around at Wrigley by the Cubs on April 26th. Got a no decision. Five innings, 11 hits, eight runs. Another 3-2. This one lifted back of the second base position and Aurelia called off by Kearns. Fly ball pitcher. And the Cubs flying out three times. Maddox to the hill when we come back. It's here, Suzuki Smart Summer Savings, where more and more people are discovering Forenza. Forenza. Forenza by Suzuki. Forenza's got it all. Style, function, and America's number one warranty. And it comes with more room. And more features than Civic. Who says you can't have it all? Suzuki is on a roll with great cars, great deals, and America's number one warranty. So don't miss Suzuki Smart Summer Savings. It was the smartest move I ever made. Forenza. Get the Forenza for just $11,994 during Suzuki. Radio Insanity, the new 104.3 Jack FM, playing what we want. I'm proud to build trucks and SUVs to a higher standard. Professional grade. I'm proud to make an SUV with the tightest turning radius. Best V8 fuel economy. Most horsepower in its class. I'm proud to innovate. And I'm proud to offer something we've never done before. Our very own employee discount. You pay what we pay. Not a cent more. Get an 05 Yukon Denali four-wheel drive for just $41,262 with your employee discount. Hurry. Program ends August 1st. You're watching Cubs Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. Well, these Cubs fans are ready to go today. Boy, it's early, but uh, got the face paint working and everything. <laughs> Greg Maddox <laughs> will face this Cincinnati Reds starting lineup. Ryan Friel started at second base coming off the DL last night. He's at third today. Lopez at short. Griffey in center. Austin Kearns, his first action since being called up from the minor leagues. Adam Dunn at first, so Sean Casey out of the lineup. Aurelia, Pena, Valentin, and Milton rounded out. Take a look at the Cubs defense brought to you by Rico. Matt Merton in left, Jerry Harrison Jr. in center. Jeremy Burnett's back in right field today. Ramirez, Ronnie Cedeno getting a start at short. Todd Walker at second. Derek Lee over at first. Michael Barrett behind the plate for future Hall of Famer and future 3,000 strikeout pitcher, Greg Maddox. Faces Ryan Friel. Strike one on a fastball at 84 from Maddox. Well, as always with Greg Maddox, uh, the strike zone is going to determine his ability to strike out hitters. Larry Van over behind the plate today. Guy that will expand the zone from time to time, especially if a, a veteran pitcher shows he's hitting his spots consistently. Two quick strikes on Friel. The next pitch struck him out. How about that start? Friel caught looking, so now Maddox five away. You know, why not get it out of the way in the first two innings? Well, I was just thinking that with the strike zone that we saw right there to Ryan Friel, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Rich Aurelia will be the 3,000 strikeout victim. That comeback sinker that starts well off the outside corner might have gotten to the outside corner. Called strike three on Ryan Friel. It is a good matchup for Maddox in that regard because the Reds have the most strikeouts in the National League, 744 strikeouts. And it seems like Maddox pitches well under these conditions through a real good game down in Florida and a hot, humid weather down there. Very sticky here in Cincinnati this afternoon. Seems to get a little more movement on that sinker, a little more downward movement on his changeup, the, the more humid it is. 
We've talked about this before. The 3,000 strikeout club, a more exclusive fraternity than the 300 win club. Lopez swinging and missing. Maddox right now is 17th on the wins list with 313 wins. One behind Gaylord Perry for 16. Two and popped up by Lopez. Ronnie Cedeno, he's under it. Bill well, Maddox is always downplayed or deprecated, I guess, his uh, personal achievements. And just talking about today, he said, I, I just want to win. Just want to get the win. Well, you know the 3,000 strikeouts is inevitable. It's going to happen at some point, whether it's today or his next start or the start after that. It doesn't really matter to Greg Maddox. It's a wonderful accomplishment, and I'm sure after he retires and leaves the game, he can sit home with his kids and his grandkids and reflect back on what a great career he's had. But uh, he's a competitor. He's a great teammate. He just wants to win. Inside on Griffey, hit his 522nd home run in the ball game last night. 14th on the all-time home run list. Drives that ball to center, and lucky for him, he didn't hit it well enough as it got down in front of Hairston. And now the return of Austin Kearns. Well, Griffey, much like Karamas Ramirez in the top half of the inning, those big power hitters, you have to respect that power, play a little deeper in the outfield. Harrison got a great jump on that ball, but Junior just didn't hit it hard enough to get it out there to it. After a slow start, Austin Kearns was optioned to AAA Louisville on June 12th, spent over a month in the minor leagues and did everything the Reds asked he hit 342 with seven home runs I mean the power was there the average was there and he also also lost some weight lost about 10 pounds got to better shape and he was brought back yesterday in fact arrived at the ballpark in about the uh, I guess the seventh inning the uh, Louisville bats were in Pawtucket so getting from Pawtucket to Cincinnati a little bit more involved than just up from Louisville said he was stretching as he was putting his uniform on in the event he came into the ball game as a defensive replacement or a pinch hitter or as part of a double switch <laughs> on one pitch foul back So the tentative plan is for Kearns to split time out in right with Willie Mopena. Well, Pena's playing left today. We've done it first, and Casey out of the lineup. Slicing, and it gets past Burnett. Griffey is going to stop at third. It is a double for Austin Kearns in his first at bat since returning. The only good news for the Cubs there is that Ken Griffey is not 25 anymore. I was watching Mark Berry, the third base coach, to see if he had ideas about sending Griffey. He waited until Burnitz retrieved the ball and saw where the throw was in relation to the cutoff man, and only then did Berry throw up the stop sign. as a third base coach for any ball club uh, you have to plan ahead a little bit know who the next hitter is how many outs in the inning what's the game situation what's the score where are we at in the ball game and with Adam Dunn coming up to the plate you don't want to get anybody thrown out at home plate second and third with two outs pitch on the way to Dunn fouled off to the left well Brad Wilkerson beat Dunn to 100 strikeouts Dunn with 99 Wilkerson with 100. Major League leaders, a former Cub, Mark Bellhorn with 109. Richie Sexton with 105 over the American League. Round ball and the shortstop, Cedeno, will throw out Dunn. The big ship put on. 
Works nicely. Maddox with one strikeout in the inning. Nothing, nothing. You can haul almost anything in a Toyota truck. I haul tools, dirt bikes, sheet rock. Bring it in the full-size Tundra with a payload of 2,025 pounds. Back it up. Or drive a Tacoma, Motor Trend's 2005 Truck of the Year. Unbreakable. Next time you have a big job to haul, do it in a Toyota truck. Once I hauled the whole state of Illinois. How do you think Canada got there? Get zero financing or up to 2,000 cash on Tundra. Or zero financing or 1750 cash on 4Runner. Toyota, moving forward. Hey Cubs fans, looking for a new way to get to Wrigley Field? Try riding your bike. There are several bike racks surrounding the ballpark, or drop off your bike worry-free at our bike check service. Located on the corner of Clark and Waveland, your bike will be attended to in our private lot at no charge. If you can't ride a bike, remember, public transportation is the best way to get to Wrigley Field. For more information, visit www.cubs.com. Chevy's proud to be the number one selling passenger car brand in America. We have nine cars with at least 30 highway miles per gallon. We've always broken the rules. Now we're rewriting them with the Chevy employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. Now get an 05 Cobalt Coupe with an MSRP of $14,190 for a Chevy employee discount price of $12,471. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer today. For a good, good Saturday, July 30th, on the eve of his induction, join Comcast Sportsnet for a special celebration of Ryan Sandberg's Hall of Fame career. At 6, Pat Boyle host Ryan Sandberg the call to the hall. From the early years to his fondest memories on the north side, Ryan tells all in this revealing interview. Then at 6.30, it's the classic 1984 Cubs-Cardinals game that can only be referred to as the Sandberg game. Be a part of the celebration Saturday, July 30th, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Presented by National City Bank. Receive in-game alerts, scores, breaking news, and more instantly on your mobile phone for only $3.99 per month. Simply text the word Cubs to 65246 or MLB Go from your mobile phone. And we'd like to welcome all of our viewers watching on Diverse Communications in Woodhall, Illinois. No score, second inning, each team with two hits in the opening frame, but no runs. Jeremy Burnett's moonlighting as a center fielder last night, but back in right. Did you see the full moon this morning at what, 7 a.m.? We were talking about it last night. I have to say I missed it. I did, too. Unless it was in my room, I wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> Even then, you might not have seen it, right? <laughs> Probably not. Valentin wants it away. That's where the pitch is. To make it 3-0. and oh. Talk about the home runs. The other thing for Eric Milton, he's allowed 147 hits. And 112.2, rather, two-thirds uh, innings pitched. So, way too many hits. That is a strike, and it's full. A couple of rookies to follow, Sedano and Merton, here in the second inning. Griffey comes in about four steps. Sudeño making his eighth start at short. Nathy Perez getting the day off today. You'll notice as Javier Valentin, the Reds catcher, gives his signs to Eric Milton. He, he sits very high in his crouch. Generally, a catcher's rear end will drop nearly down to his heels as he gives the sign to the pitcher. Sometimes guys that sit up as high as Valentin does will expose those signs to the guys over in that third base dugout. So to try to combat that, you can see the fingers hang down a little bit there. 
Sometimes uh, you can see that from the dugout. But to combat that, he tries to get his hand as far back into his crotch as he can uh, to try to hide them from the guys in the coach's box and over in the third base dugout. His very subtle movements, first with his index finger, then with his little finger, indicating a fastball away to the right-handed hitter. That's one of the things that they've wanted Valentin to work on is his flexibility. Very stiff in the knees and the quadriceps muscles doesn't really get down as much as you'd like to see a catcher get down back there. Hey, guess what? Another fly ball, and Kearns runs this one down. All the outs have been in the air. Four fly outs and one pop out, and Matt Merton will, in his first career at bat against Eric Milton, four for five in game one Monday for the rookie Merton. And Merton showing great patience and, and a willingness to go to the opposite field. When pitchers work him away, he's perfectly content to shoot that ball into right field. Milton has a no hitter on his resume as a Minnesota twin. He threw a no no against the Angels on September 11th, 1999. As a Philly, he took a no hitter into the ninth against the Cubs last year. Almost a, a year ago, in fact, it was July 25th. Ended up with a no decision. Cubs got a bloop double from Michael Barrett to start that ninth inning. Eventually, Scored two runs to tie it. Phillies would win it in the bottom of the ninth. But again, he had a no-hitter going into the inning and could not even get a win on his record. That's tough luck. For a guy like Milton to throw a no-hitter or come close to a no-hitter, it's usually an indication that he just had tremendous command of all of his pitches on a given day. You, know, you look at a guy like Kerry Wood, perhaps, and uh, if he strikes out 20 in a ball game. It's usually because he has some devastating pitch that's getting a lot of swinging strikes, a lot of quick outs. But for Milton, he, he needs to have great command. His stuff is not really good enough to blow hitters away. That day against the Cubs, eight and two thirds, three hits, two runs, 12 strikeouts. So couldn't get that final out in the ninth. And as Merton, you mentioned the patience, draws the walk. It's still very early in Matt Burton's major league career, but certainly a lot of signs that uh, this guy is not intimidated. He's not overwhelmed. Great patience for a young hitter, the willingness to go to the opposite field. He's shown great instincts on the bases. And that's the third walk he has drawn as a big leaguer. Greg Maddox fouls it out of play. Many times you'll see a youngster come up from the minor leagues and just because they're in the major leagues, they get away from the things that made them successful in the minor leagues. But Merton appears to have just carried his game right up from AAA and continues to do the same things he was doing successfully down in the minors. Maddox went too far. Two strikes. He has 244 career hits. He has a three-game hitting streak. He's four for eight. For his last three outings. And he waved at that high fastball and strikes out. Bottom second, Maddox now five strikeouts away from 3,000, no score. molecules delivers non-stop protection throughout the life of your oil not just oil pens oil get a $15 MasterCard gift card when you buy a case of pens oil platinum motor oil at AutoZone your guide to the all-new Hyundai Sonata it has more standard safety features than any car in its class like six airbags electronic stability control and active front head restraints plus award-winning quality backed by America's best warranty all for 4500 less than a cord 
the all-new Hyundai Sonata. Starting at just $19,395, it's a Hyundai like you've never seen before. The all-new Hyundai Sonata is here. Test drive yours starting at just $19,395. Salmon spend most of their adult lives in the ocean. After maturing, they migrate back to spawn in the same rivers and streams where they were born. It is here that many a salmon's life is cut short. However, there is good news. I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance by switching to GEICO. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Guests on Comcast Sportsnet receive gift certificates to Harry Carey's Restaurant. Harry Carey's, the official home plate of the Chicago Cubs. Visit www.harrycarries.com. Weekdays, don't miss Chicago Tribune Live on Comcast Sportsnet. It's Chicago Sports Show. Dan Jiggets and a rotating panel of sports writers and special guests discuss the day's hottest topics and get you ready for the night in sports. Don't miss Chicago Tribune Live today at 5.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Well, some sun here this afternoon in Cincinnati. Richard Aurelia. It is six for 34 with a home run against Greg Maddox, and he bounces one just foul. A couple of two out hits for the Reds in the first inning. Maddox stranded them at second and third. When he gets that 3,000 strikeout, Maddox admits he'll keep the baseball, but this is a win. The innings pitched in the the World Series ring he has more important than the strikeouts. He'd love another World Series ring. And it really crushes one to deep left field, and that one will go. <laughs> Tenth home run for Aurelia. And the second in this series, you get a two run blast in game one. home run surrendered by Maddox this year a sinker that started over the middle of the plate tail down and in Just didn't get it to the spot he wanted right there wanted that ball inside a little bit further where Aurelia would have rolled over and hit another ground ball toward third base but just stayed over the heart of the plate a little bit too much Side corner, it's a strike. Well, the Reds back into a four outfield, four man outfield rotation. And this is really the first time Jerry Naren has had to figure this out because he took over on June 21st. Austin Kearns was already in the minor leagues as Pena strikes out. So Maddox is four away from 3,000. Naren may not have to work on that four-man outfield rotation too much as we head into the trading deadline. You see Willie Mopena chasing an 85-mile-an-hour fastball up around the letters. Adam Dunn, Ken Griffey Jr., even Austin Kearns, all their names have been mentioned in possible trade rumors. after the foul by Valentin. He hit a home run last night. Three home runs. His last two games, he hit two Sunday against the Rockies. Oh one Dips inside. Real struck out looking in the first inning. Pena swinging here in the second. But a two strikeouts for Greg Maddox. His changeup. But keep an eye on the home plate umpire Larry Vanover as he moves around behind the plate with Michael Barrett. When Barrett moves inside on a left-handed hitter, Vanover tries to stay on that inside shoulder. 
and almost gets completely screened by the batter. Valentin stands very close to the plate. And when Michael Barrett moves inside, Vanover moves with him. And it looks like he's having a real hard time getting a look at the pitches. Barrett will give his sign and then he'll set up where he wants the pitch delivered. This is going to be a change up on the inside part of the plate. You see Vanover kind of craning his neck to get a look at it there as Valentin goes down on strikes. That's three for Maddox today. So he's three away. something that Maddox does that very few pitchers will do throw his change up to the inside part of the plate he'll do that intentionally a lot of times early in the count gets a hitter way out in front and he'll pull the ball foul for strike one foul ball strike one there he went to the change up for the strikeout 102 Milton foul back our way Milton hitting 152 this year. Does have a home run. It was on May 8th against Jeff Weaver of the Dodgers. First career home run. So each starting pitcher today with a home run this year. Maddox hit one off John Halama of the Red Sox. And Wrigley on June 10th. Two and two. Not that Maddox would try for strikeouts. It's something he really hasn't done his whole career, but I'm sure he'd rather just get the six out of the way and he needs just three more. He has three already. He won't have to be asked about it a whole lot more. No strikeout here. Milton rifling one into right. Is the guy code direct quote from Maddox on strikeouts. He's just trying to strike out every hitter is a good way to run your pitch count up, not be around for the sixth and seventh. If I strike them out, great. If they ground out, that's okay too. You have to get 27 outs to win. It doesn't matter how you get them. It's that kiss theory. Keep it simple, stupid. Just throw the ball over the plate, let your defense work behind you. Why should you work any harder than you have to? Paul Stanley come up with that, the kiss theory. <laughs> Base hit to center. So just like the first inning, the Reds with back-to-back two-out hits. The difference here in the second is Richard really has started the inning with a home run. Maddox and Barrett chatting things over. And again, Kerry Wood with right shoulder inflammation. Hopefully nothing serious. Kerry is scheduled to meet with the media after the ball game today. Bouncer to Walker, short throw to Lee, and the Reds done. They strand two, but they do get a run on the leadoff homer from Aurelia. One to nothing Reds. Millions of American families rely on Ford. Right now, Ford invites you to join the Ford Family Plan and pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. Until August 1st, you'll get our discounts on the entire family of Ford SUVs in stock, including Explorer, America's best-selling SUV. Now get a Ford Explorer 4x4 for just 24739 That's over 8100 in savings on America's most trusted SUV. No hassles, no gimmicks. Visit your local Ford store today, and welcome to the family. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Are you really getting the best Hyundai deal? Hi, I'm Maury Edelson. Look at the value in a new Edelson Hyundai. Like this new Sonata that comes with America's best warranty with 10-year or 100,000-mile protection. Or this new Edelson Hyundai Santa Fe. You never pay additional freight charges or add-ons here. 
and get the best offer for your trade-in. Anyone can sell you a car. At Edelson Hyundai, we make customers for life. Right now at Saturn of Schaumburg, Saturn of Dundee, Saturn of Elmhurst, and Saturn of Lake Barrington, for the first time in history, everyone gets the GM employee discount on every Saturn in stock. You pay what we pay, not one cent more. Now is the best time to buy a new Saturn. Team Saturn has a huge selection, and you'll get the GM employee discount on the Saturn of your choice. This is the first, and maybe the only time this offer will be made. Hurry in today to Saturn of Schaumburg, Saturn of Dundee, Saturn of Elmhurst, and Saturn of Lake Barrington. Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. Don't pass up your opportunity to experience a Cubs game from one of the official rooftop partners across the street from Wrigley Field. For information, visit ballparkrooftops.com. That's heating up here in Cincinnati. Game time temperature 84 degrees. The sun is now out. It is going to be a hot weekend in the Midwest. I'm seeing triple digits in various places. It's going to be warm in St. Louis. We know that in late July. That's a given every summer. Top of the order, the Cubs are down one to nothing. Greg Maddox with three strikeouts through two innings. So now he has 2,997. Ashton with a bunt single in the first inning, four for 11 in the series. Pushes one again. Milton got off the mound quickly, and he gets it to Dunn. Didn't fool him that time. It just wasn't as good of a bunt that time. The first time he got it past Eric Milton out there into no man's land. Dunn was still playing very back. Aurelia was playing far back at second base. See, they were in their normal positions. The first bunt, however, was a little bit harder. He was able to get it past Milton. And Hairston jumping over the base down there at first so as not to spike Adam Dunn, whose foot was in the middle of the base. We mentioned he doesn't play a lot of first base, but it's a good way to get your foot stepped on. Pitch two Walker drops in for a strike on a 50 curveball. Another early action in the National League today. Mets leading the Padres one to nothing is a bat. Mets bat in the home half of the fifth. Dodgers leading the first inning run at Philadelphia. Phillies batting in the bottom of the first. It's one to nothing. Inside on Walker, American League, Toronto two, Seattle nothing, bottom three. In Canada, and the Indians lead the Royals 3-1. Bottom six in Cleveland. Look out, Eric Milton, a boomerang base hit. Came in pretty hot, but just looked at the uh, the speed gun. They have a pitch speed uh, display in the outfield. It said 97. I believe that's how hard Todd Walker hit it. That was probably the ball coming off the bat right there. Eric Milton uh, probably add up two of his change-ups to get to 97, but uh, that ball came right back where it came from. A lot of times that radar gun will get the throwbacks from the catcher to the pitcher. You'll see 42, 48. I mentioned Derek right now leading the Triple Crown categories. In fact, in sole possession of first in all three. Go back to 1968. Only two guys have led in all three categories later in a season. In 72, Dick Allen of the White Sox was leading in the American League on September 8th. Gary Sheffield of the Padres in 92 on August 23rd was leading the National League in all three. It is July 21st, and Derek Lee has a lead. We've gotten a couple of emails. Somebody asking if. You know, Derek uh, leads in a couple of categories at the end of the year, but is tied for first in another one. Would it still be the Triple Crown? I would say yes. If you're in first in a category, you're the leader. That's the Booth's opinion. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know how he couldn't be. Deep to left, and Pena 
tracking makes a catch just onto the warning track. Well, I mean, if you know, if, for example, if Derek Lee and Andrew Jones tie with the same number of home runs, uh, when you talk about it, they led the league, both of them, co-leaders. So I would certainly think that uh, if you ended up tied in one of the triple crown categories and were solo in the other two, that you would still be the triple crown winner. Ramirez singled in the first inning. Seven for 13 in this series. You know, the other great Derek Lee No, there are a ton of them. But he is in the top three in the National League. In average, on base, slugging, home runs, runs, RBIs, hits, total bases, and extra base hits. Only twice prior to this year, all time, as a player finished in the top three in his league in those categories. Nap Lajoie of Cleveland in 1904 and Ty Cobb with the Tigers in 1909. Well, he's doing something this year that I've never seen before. I, I've never seen a hitter stay as hot as long as Derek Lee has. Two to Ramirez is upstairs. One ball, two strikes. You know, as a hitter, your approach against Eric Milton is kind of backwards to what you usually do. Generally, when you face a pitcher, you, you in your mind you say, "Make him get the ball up. Look for something up in the strike zone." But Milton works at the top and above the top of the strike zone, so your approach to him should be make him get the ball down. Ramirez has had a couple of pretty good rip set pitches down around the knees. Milton doesn't go down there very often. He's usually working from the belt up. Now a lot of guys will hold the ball in the stretch position with a with a changeup grip. Some guys with a splitter grip. That looks like the uh, the four seam grip. Yeah, he'll throw his uh, his cut fastball off of that grip. You'll see he adjusts in his glove right there. If you watch his fingers closely, sometimes he'll make the adjustment up there in the glove. And the reason a lot of pitchers have the change-up grip to begin with is because it's much easier to go from a circle change or a split finger grip to any other pitch where you're only using your index and middle finger. It's a lot easier to do that than go from a two-finger grip to a split finger or a changeup. Yeah, it involves a lot more movement. It's much easier for the hitter to pick up that wiggle or the movement of the hand and the arm and the glove as he changes the grip. See just some subtle finger movement up there in his glove as he rolls that ball around in his hand. Here has just reached out, sent a lazy fly to Kearns to end the inning. Cubs have left four through three. They're down one to nothing. Do you have a dinosaur? No. Do you have a mummy? No. Do you have the space shuttle? No. What do you have? Well, we have a display of the local gopher in his natural habitat. That's not a gopher. Yeah, it is. Take them to a place that has it all. Fly Southwest Airlines from Chicago Midway to BWI Airport for just $84 one way. You are now free to move about the country. Hey, it's me. Meet me at sunset. Don't be late. Great explorers know all the right trails. I see you got my message. The 245 horsepower all-wheel drive Nissan Murano.
When beer starts out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light. Monday, the Cubs are primed to begin the homestand on a high note when they host the San Francisco Giants at Wrigley, followed by Cubs Post Game Live. Cubs Giants, Monday night at 7. Get your game on Comcast Sportsnet. Bottom three, one to nothing Reds. Richie Aurelia with a leadoff homer in the second inning. Greg Maddox with three strikeouts today, three away from 3,000. Some other notes. Only eight pitchers currently have won 300 games and have struck out 3,000. So he'd be the ninth. Line right at the third baseman, Ramirez. Ronnie Cedeno is playing behind second base. Get a complete recap of the day in sports with Sports Night on Comcast Sportsnet. Coming up tonight at 6.30, Cubs highlights and an NHL player update. Join William and Gail for Sports Night tonight at 6.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Ball one on Austin Kearns, doubled to right in his first at bat. Maddox will join Bob Gibson. He's the only pitchers to have pitched their entire career in the National League. Again, that 3,000 strikeout club. Cubs will be the first team to have two players reach the exclusive fraternity in their uniform. Fergie Jenkins, the other. and a 2-1 pitch and now 3-1. and one. Fergie Jenkins also the only pitcher right now with 3,000 strikeouts and fewer than 1,000 walks. Greg Maddox with just 892 career walks. See if he can avoid one here. 3-1 to Kearns. And it's 3-2. and two. Maddox after working away, 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 runs a sinker actually up and into Kearns, hits the top half of the ball, fouls it off his foot. Base hit to the left, so Kearns was hitting a triple A, and he just continues it back here in the big leagues, two for two. There's never been a question about Austin Kearns' ability as a baseball player. He does everything well on the field. The only question was, could you keep him healthy long enough to see those numbers. Adam Dunn with his 25th home run last night. So at least 25 home runs in four straight seasons. He's the sixth red to have done that. Eric Davis, Ted Klusewski, George Foster, Johnny Bench, Frank Robinson. Pretty good group. Bench and Robinson did it in seven straight years with the Reds. Right back to Maddox. Cedeno covering second, fires it to Lee. It goes one, six, three. Nice double play turned by the Cubs to the fourth, one to nothing Cincinnati. Chevy's proud to be the number one selling passenger car brand in America. We have nine cars with at least 30 highway miles per gallon. We've always broken the rules. Now we're rewriting them with the Chevy employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. Now get an 05 Chevy Malibu with an MSRP of 19825 for Chevy employee discount price of 15692 after cash back. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer today.
If your driveway looks worn, don't replace it. Resurface it. Quick Creek Concrete Resurfacer. The easy way to make old concrete look like new. Some like things warm. Others cool. Which is why the Lexus ES is available with heated and ventilated front seats and dual zone climate control. So at least in one place, everyone is guaranteed to feel comfortable. At your Chicago area Lexus dealer. Monday night, it's 80s night at Wrigley Field. And if you can't be there, tune in to Comcast Sportsnet's special 80s broadcast of the game. Hear your favorite tunes and relive the best pop culture from the decade. Catch 80s night, Monday at 7, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Now that point in the telecast where we find out who was paying attention in the last inning. <laughs> Our Aflac trivia question kind of gave it away. And the only pitcher to record 3,000 or more strikeouts and less than a thousand walks. Think about it. We'll get you the answer in the bottom of the inning. Don't re rewind the videotape or <laughs> no fair. TiVo it. Just try to remember if you can. Michael Barrett. Ball one. Fourth inning. Talked about Milton's no hit bid. It was broken up in Philadelphia last year. Michael Barrett, the guy who broke it up. It was a flare to center. Doug Glanville froze on it and then couldn't get it on a diving attempt. It was a double. Wind and a 1-0 offering. Two balls, no strikes. It took the Cubs a while to get to Aaron Harang. They scored three times in the seventh. But that was it. Harang then really settled down the final two innings and completed the game. And for the Reds, their first complete game of the year. to Freel at third. Eric Milton has not completed seven innings in any start his last ten times out. And only two times all year has he gone at least seven innings. This is his 21st start. kind of uh, performance you would expect from a guy who got a multi-year multi-million dollar free agent contract to come over here and pitch for the Reds in a good spot in the rotation however if he does have anything working for him following harangue as Bernie lines one into center field harangue last night uh, with the exception of that seventh inning when he gave up the back-to-back -back home runs and another run later in the inning Everything was down. Knees are below. Knees are below. Sinker, slider, everything down, down, down. And then you follow him in the rotation with a guy who works at the very upper limits of the strike zone. It does give the hitters a completely different look from one game to the next. But apparently Milton has not been able to take advantage of that the way the Reds thought he should. Runner at first with one out. Ronnie Cedeno 0 for 1. Driven right center field, splitting Griffey and Kearns. Burnitz is going to be set by Chris Spire. Aurelia with a relay throw, and Burnitz is safe. It was close, but Burnitz just got in. So Cedeno ties it. Burnitz taking his time. After that slide. Well, Ron is staying on one of those fastballs up and out over the plate. Doesn't try to lift it to left field. Just drives it the opposite way. Once it splits the gap, Bernie is off to the races. He knows that ball's going to drop. 
thinks he has a chance to score a good turn at second base, a good turn at third base. A little bit of an awkward slide here at the end. He had to get around Javier Valentin to get on that plate. He drags his hand through that right-handed batter's box, the right leg dragging through that right-handed batter's box, but able to avoid the block at home plate and score the first run of the game for the Cubs. I don't know if one of his legs got caught underneath him when he kind of collided with Valentin. He was really coming in pretty fast. Now it's 1-1. Cedeno with the RBI double. Looks like they're looking ankle or his foot there, the right ankle. You see the, the skid marks where he sliding into the plate. Keep an eye on the right foot as he goes in there. Now the right foot probably catches the left foot of Javier Valentin before springing loose and sliding across the plate. Valentin trying to block it. Burnett's trying to get around and it looked like he may have just caught the left shin guard of Javier Valentin with that, uh, that right foot. Two strikes on Matt Burton. Plays that one on the bounce. Cedeno has to hold. He didn't know Pena was going to catch it. So first and second. Let's take one last look at that. Jeremy Burnett slide at home plate once again. Watch his right foot as it ricochets off the shin guard of Javier Valentin and then across home plate. Hopefully nothing worse than a little bit of a bruise. He's got a strawberry right there on his knee that you can clearly see. It's an occupational hazard for a position player. Most guys have those on their knees or their elbows from the first day of spring training until the end of the season. Those are those guys that are on base a lot and are sliding a lot. Meanwhile, Matt Burton is five for six in this series. Maddox pops it foul on the front. You see what he did? And when he popped it up, he took the bat like I ought to. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> he wanted to hit it again. <laughs> well, he is a perfectionist. I mean, uh, we've talked about it all afternoon. All he cares about is winning, and he knows that the ability to get down a bunt, to field his position, to do all those other things that pitchers have to do. Uh, we're going to go a long way toward determining whether he wins or loses a ball game. To get the barrel of the bat up high. And swings away, bounces it into right. Cedeno heading home. Here's a throw cut off by Dunn. Just fooled everybody. And he now has a four-game hitting streak. He gives the Cubs the lead. It's two to one. Boy, that's exactly how you draw it up. This little slug bunt, pull the defense in, and then just chop at the ball. Look where Dunn is. He's about 35, 40 feet from home plate when Maddox slaps that ball past him. Kearns made that throw on the run, and I think the inexperience of Adam Dunn at first base uh, may have given the Cubs a run there. It looked like that throw was online and in plenty of time to get the runner at the plate, but... Dunn cut it off. Four straight hits for the Cubs, all for that bottom of the order, six through nine. Swing and a miss by Hairston. And notice it came right after he popped up the bunt foul and was very upset with himself. Came right back and just executed everything perfectly. Well, you see a lot of pitchers try that during the course of the season, but one mistake they usually make is they try to hit the ball too hard. I mean, you've already got the defense broken up. You've got guys breaking all over the place. You've got the corner infielders charging. All you have to do is make contact and not hit it directly at somebody, and you're probably going to get a base hit. That's all Maddox did, just pulled the bat back and kind of punched at the ball. Wrapping that ankle, I'm sure... You saw the top of that foot, a nice scrape on it as well. Look at his 
drilled foul by Hairston, and it was nowhere near Chris Spire. That's that's how far he pulled it. <laughs> Chris Spire is probably standing 10 or 15 feet closer to home plate than the coach's box, and he still pulled it well wide of him. <laughs> Yeah, it was behind where Chris Byer is standing. And Chris wants to get in a good position. He's closer to the plate than he normally would be because Matt Merton is the runner at second. He wants to get a good angle on that runner. Now, if you really watch a third base coach during the course of a ball game, they will be up and down that line very rarely in that coach's box. When they have a runner coming from first around second base to third, they'll move as far out the left field line as they can get to get in that runner's line of vision so they can pick him up quickly. And then as the runner comes from second to third, they'll run toward home plate to get as far down the line towards home as they can so they can wait till the last possible instant to either send or hold that runner. Coach's box is just a decoration. Two runs in already here in this inning. The RBI is coming from Sedano and Maddox. Oh. And Valentin will head out to chat with Milton. And these are the kinds of innings you really love to see from the Cubs who have been known as a home run hitting team the last couple of years. A high percentage in comparison to other teams of their runs coming via the home run but not thus far today. Seven hits and no home runs. Well this kind of an inning is all about pressure. You keep pressure on the pitcher pressure on the catcher pressure on the infield defense. Back of first goes done into foul territory and makes a catch. Here's Todd Walker, one for two. Big at bat here for Todd Walker. Like to find a way to get on base, possibly drive in a run, but what you really want in this situation is to get Derek Lee to the plate. Some runners on base and an opportunity to really do some damage. We saw in the open right off the bat some uh, Greg Maddox strikeouts from 1986. And if you look closely, you notice the uniform pants, the bottoms were up about mid calf. That's the way uh, guys wore them back in the 80s. Of course, it looks strange to see that now. And just looking at, at Todd Walker and the pant bottoms uh, down around his heels, Derek Lee on deck, and uh, most guys have him pretty low. I wonder if in 20 years we'll look back and say, wow, that looks strange. He doesn't probably be wearing shorts in 20 years, like the old White Sox. <laughs> Or probably be some kind of neoprene body suit that you, you, know, you slide into that you know you don't get those kind of strawberries from sliding on the bases and you're more aerodynamic and padded. Nobody does what Maddox does anymore. It's either all the way down where you're almost walking on your pant bottoms or hiked up right around the kneecaps. got to the big leagues we were required to show two inches of the team color socks and back then everybody wore the old stirrups which were a pain in the butt anyway you had to put on sanitary socks and then these stirrup socks and we show two inches of color I'm not even sure Todd Walker has socks on Here's a 2 1 0 Walker driven deep. Kern's going back on it. That is a three run homer. Third home run of the series for Todd Walker. And the big blast makes it 5 to 1. And all 
three homers in this series for Walker off left-handers. Well, he'll get Derek Lee to the plate. Unfortunately, the bases have been cleared with that three-run homer. That's why Todd Walker is in this Cubs lineup. He swings that bat against righties, against lefties, and swings it with authority. He gets the ball a little bit out over the plate. Good extension, good quick hands through the hitting zone. Just over that 370 mark, our Heineken home run replay. Todd Walker with his seventh home run of the season. 30th home run allowed by Eric Milton. home runs have been hit in this series. The Cubs have hit 10. Oh, what a stop by Creel. Dropped the ball. Won't make a throw. And Lee with the infield hit. He's one for three. Well, this is a nice play just to get to this ball. Hit right over the third base bag. Headed for foul territory. Creel kind of landed awkwardly on his glove after Grabbing that ball, and no sense throwing that one. Derek Lee's going to beat it easily. Six hits in the inning. Now, what I should have added earlier about stringing the hits together, you like to cap it off, of course, with the three-run homers, so you see a little bit of everything here this fourth inning. Kind of like mixing in a salad. You know, you, you get all your basic food groups taken and, care of. And every now and then, you got to mix in a big steak, too. Right. That three-run homer. Take mine with vinaigrette, thank you. The salad, that is. That one hit hard. Creel with a diving stop. This time, picks himself up, makes a good throw. Nine men sent to the plate by the Cubs here in the fourth inning. Big crooked number five runs. Three coming on this swing from Todd Walker. It's 5 1. Hey. Hey. Whew. Yeah, you look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Oh, well, when I'm hurt and miss work? Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yeah. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. <laughs> A thousand faces, a million dreams. Do you see yourself? Robert Morris College graduates more bachelor degrees in business management than any college in Illinois. Our School of Computer Studies features the latest technology in home and systems integration, preparing students for in-demand technology careers. But there are hundreds of other opportunities behind our doors. One for every dream. Robert Morris College. Real college for the real world. I'm proud to build trucks and SUVs to a higher standard. Professional grade. I'm proud to make an SUV with the tightest turning radius. Best V8 fuel economy. Most horsepower in its class. I'm proud to innovate. And I'm proud to offer something we've never done before. Our very own employee discount. You pay what we pay. Not a cent more. Get an 05 Yukon two-wheel drive SLE for just $29,208 with your employee discount. Hurry. Program ends August 1st. Maybe uh, paying homage to Perky Jenkins. Named the only pitcher to record 3,000 or more strikeouts in less than 1,000 walks. Yeah, Perky Jenkins. 3,192 strikeouts, 997 walks. So Greg Maddox said today he just wants to Try to get the win. Well, he has a 5-1 lead. Aurelia with a leadoff homer in the second.
Maddox with three strikeouts through three innings. Three away from 3,000. One of the first, two in the second. He also has a go-ahead RBI today. 2-2 on Aurelia. Aurelia with his second career home run against Maddox. In the second inning. Pitch. Line just past Walker in the right. Sixteen hits combined. Cubs with nine, the Reds now with seven. I mean, look at the three strikeouts that Maddox has in this game. Of course, Ryan Friel struck out looking to start the game on three pitches. That was kind of unusual for a contact hitter like Ryan Friel, but Willie Mo Pena and Javier Valentin, the two guys at the bottom of this Reds order, very much fastball hitters, very much free swingers, the kind of guys that figure to punch out against a crafty veteran like Greg Maddox. I mean, even Adam Dunn, who struck out 99 times on the season, will make an adjustment facing a pitcher like Greg Maddox. The younger, more aggressive hitters are, are going to go up there and do what they always do. Look for a fastball, try to hit it out of the ballpark. And Maddox will prey on that aggression. He gets frustrated. The ball's halfway to home plate, and he already knows it's not where he wanted it. Frustrated with himself. Three and one. Aurelia, the runner at first with nobody out. Cubs with five big ones at the top of this inning. Here he comes. High bouncer. Mira is hoping, and it does. Kick foul. So a quote from Barry Larkin, and it sounds like he's considering returning to the field. Mentioned Jim Bowden, the Nationals general manager, former GM of the Reds. He's been trying to get Larkin to come out of retirement. So you never know. Ramirez will get it to Walker. The turn is late. Todd couldn't get much on the throw. Another slow developing double play. You see how deep Aramis Ramirez is when he gets that ball. Walker just tries to quick trigger it out there at second base. Couldn't get much on the throw, but came off the back of the bag at second to protect himself from that sliding runner, and the fadeaway throw was just not in time to get Payne at first. One of the defense mechanisms a second baseman has out there when you turn the double play, sometimes they'll come across the bag. Sometimes they'll touch the bag and back up toward their normal position, and other times they'll fade away from the base into shallow left center almost, using that base to protect themselves from the sliding runner. You've got to be unpredictable as a second baseman out there if you want to avoid that sliding runner. Walker and he comes off the back of the base. That runner has to hit the bag, go over the base before he can even get to Todd Walker. But when you fade away like that, you can't get as much on the throw. The 0 2 smothered by Barrett. One ball, two strikes.
struck out Valentin back in the second inning on a changeup inside. Started the ball off the plate inside, got Valentin way out front, swung right over the top of it. There goes the runner. It pitches inside. Barrett will not make a throw. Pena with his second steal of the year. And that was another inside changeup. That time in the dirt. Michael Barrett with no chance to throw out Pena. Got a great jump over there at first. And then with the ball in the dirt, just too much time had elapsed for him to even risk making a throw. Kick in the 2-2 pitch, hit high in the air to right field, and Javier Valentin with another home run. He's made two starts in the series, a home run in each. And missing the first two games of this series did not cool him off. It's 5-3. It looked like Greg Maddox went to the well once too often there. He had missed inside with two change-ups. Tried to come back with one more. Valentin all over. On the ground to Cedeno. He retires Milton. What a second out. This pitch was 79 miles an hour. Just gets out over the plate a little bit too much. See, when Valentin hits a home run, he gets a lot of air under it. Skyscraper fly balls. He's four for seven with three home runs against Greg Maddox. Creel, the leadoff hitter, one for two. Strike one. I just wanted to read you the Barry Larkin quote, and you tell me what, what your gut feeling is. He asked me to help the team talking about Jim Bowden. I told him earlier if he were in dire straits, I would do that, do what I could. I can't answer if I'm going to play or not. I've got three kids I've got to talk to, three young bosses and one wife. And you see, he wants to spend some time thinking about it. I have a feeling he's going to play. I think if you're not going to play, you say no. <laughs> Maybe I think means yes. We'll see. Five, three Cubs. Some things you can always count on. You can count on your dog, family, taxi. And you can count on the legendary Toyota Camry. Good gas mileage, dependability. Or count on the safety features of Sienna and its available all-wheel drive. Nice. Or check out Highlander with its great MPG. So no matter what you count on. Junk food. And hair gel. <laughs> add Toyota to the list. Now get up to 1250 Sienna cash back, 700 Camry cash, or 800 cash back on Highlander. Toyota, moving forward. to get up and make a trip to Military Police Supply. For the past comes to life, and when you get personalized dog tags, we punch them out so you can wear them out. We have backpacks, jumpsuits, hats, and caps. Walk in, sugar and spice. Walk out with authentic military merchandise. Located at 7351 West Madison and Forest Park. Minutes from the Eisenhower from the city or suburbs. Dial 312. Surplus for weekly specials and closeouts serving you since 1977. Military and Police Supply. Now a few words from the drill instructor. Doc Father, I need your help. Go on, my friend. I can't take it anymore. The high-pressure salespeople, the bad service, the low selection, the huge prices. You came to the right place. This I could help with. Hi, I'm Andy Francis from Evergreen Kia, and we're always making deals you can't refuse. Like with the new Amante with $10,000 off, and that includes the Kia's 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. We're Evergreen Kia at 92nd and Western. Take good care of my Kia. And we'll take good care of you. Watching Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. Tonight, American League powers collide on the south side as Paul Canerco and the White Sox entertain David Ortiz and the World Series champion Red Sox. Red Sox, White Sox tonight at 7. Right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Just try to stay cool, get a little mist on a hot day like this. Five three Cubs is a bat here in the fifth inning. Pitch to 
to Michael Barrett. Curve ball low, ball one. Pennsylvania. In the corner, Barrett around first, and Pena, pretty nonchalant down there, didn't pick up the baseball in time. I tell you what, if he gets to that ball in a hurry, picks it up, I'm not sure Michael Barrett tries for a double. We'll never know. It's a two base hit for Barrett. And an eight game hitting streak. This is Pena's second start in left field this season, and he has not looked comfortable out there all afternoon. Even on the routine fly balls, he looks a little mm -hmm. unsure of himself and just doesn't come up with this one, allowing Michael Barrett to move on to second base. Mitch fouls it back. Remember, you saw that uh, right foot getting taped up earlier. trying to add on here their lead is two low outside and it's with the Babe Ruth look with his pants trying to hook a ball to the right side here advance Michael Barrett to third base set the table for Ronnie Cedeno and Matt Burke Dirt were bigger, he probably would have been hit. <laughs> they were bloused a little bit, and he would have hit it. It was that close. And where's Babe Ruth's number? Two one on the way. It's slicing away from Griffey who knocks it down, keeps it in front of him. Burnett's on his way to second with a stand-up double. Back-to-back -back doubles. Barrett, he is at third. And Ronnie Cedeno will come up with two men in scoring position. And it doesn't look like he's going to bat against Eric Milton as the manager, Jerry Naren, comes out. That's a walk that Jerry Naren has taken a lot of times in his tenure as the interim manager here with the Reds. Another short outing for Eric Milton. Ford called to the pin. And it's Jason Standridge to come in. Chevy's proud to have the best-selling full-size SUVs five years in a row like Tahoe with best-in-class fuel economy. We've always broken the rules. Now we're rewriting them. With the Chevy employee discount for everyone, you pay what we pay, not a cent more. Now get an 05 Chevy Trailblazer LS two-wheel drive with an MSRP of $27,150 for a Chevy employee discount price of $21,417 after cash back. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer today. Okay, thank you. largest network of ATMs and banks in the country. Only from Bank of America. Higher standards. Hyundai's winning SUV sales event has been held over, and you can still save big on our award-winning SUVs, including the new Hyundai Tucson, winner of Strategic Vision's 2005 Total Quality Award with six standard airbags, or the V6 Hyundai Santa Fe, winner of Strategic Vision's Total Value Award, all backed by America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Hurry and save at Hyundai's winning SUV sales event, now held over at Hyundai. Get a 2005 Hyundai Santa Fe with $2,000 cash back at your local Hyundai dealer. 
Take a look at Ken Griffey Jr. coming in, trying to make the diving attempt on this ball off the bat of Jeremy Bernitz. He just kind of pushes it out in front of himself. Ball gets away a lot further than he expected. Michael Barrett's not sure whether to go or not. He sees the ball on the ground and just kind of jogs it over to third base. I mean, after Junior found the ball, he picked it up and lollipopped it back into the infield. Felipe Lopez, the shortstop, dropped the ball. It rolled across the infield dirt for quite a while. That's why you always go hard to the next base. Run hard until the coach tells you to stop. Michael Barrett may have had a chance to score as that throw back into the infield got away from Lopez. For Eric Milton, as you see the numbers for Jason Standridge, this is the 12th time this year in 21 starts he has not gone six innings and that really taxes your bullpen when one of your horses can't get you at least six innings and it's the third time in this series that a red starter has not gone beyond four innings so four innings plus oh. for Milton today and if you're Jerry Naren you are going over to Aaron Harang and thanking him over and over and over again that he went nine last night Standard pitched in the first two games of this series, an inning and a third in game one. Pitched another inning in game two. Yeah, Harang does not throw up a complete game last night. Uh, the Reds are in serious bullpen trouble today. This is not the first go around, by the way, for Jerry Naren as a major league manager, former Texas Rangers manager. swings and misses to make it one and two so third major league season and as a manager for Naren what is it about these former catchers they become managers <laughs> it's because they got hit in the mask with too many foul tips that's what it is <laughs> yeah managers and broadcasters fouled off by Cedeno it just seems like everything you do as a catcher lends itself well to to running a ball club. You have to handle the pitching staff. You have to position your defense. You have to know every play defensively, offensively. To be a little bit of a psychologist, be able to work an umpire. And just a little crazy. Sometimes a lot crazy helps. Good job by Ronnie to hang in there against Standridge. You know, the Reds have made a lot of changes. Went to a very disappointing start this year in May. They designated D'Angelo Jimenez for assignment. Paul Wilson went on the DL. was lost for the season. Danny Graves was cut. We talked about Austin Kearns in June. Was demoted. And Dave Miley was fired. Along with Don Gullett, the pitching coach. Two little tapper. Burnett's caught up between second and third. Luckily, Standridge didn't see it. And he throws out Cedeno. If Standridge had turned around, he would have gotten Burnett's caught between second and third. I think Jeremy just assumed that Barrett was going to be running. And you'll see Burnett's at the top of the screen. Breaks right away on contact. Barrett's holding up at third base. Standridge goes to first all the way. And once again, look where Adam Dunn is, right in the middle of the base. Now, granted, he's a big guy. And if anybody can defend first base, it would be Adam Dunn. But uh, there's a potential for a serious collision down there at some point in this ball game. He's got that foot right in the middle of the base. Well, Maddox on deck and first base open. And always a sign of respect, even though he's a number eight hitter. But Matt Burton, we mentioned it, is five for six in this series. So they'd rather load him up and go after the pitcher than pitch to Burton. You know, and this may change later in the season or later in his career when teams have a better idea of what Matt Burton's all about, what his strengths and weaknesses are. But for a guy that you don't know anything about, who's five for his last six, you're not going to take any chances at all. Just put him on base, go after the pitcher. If you are near a computer, you can email us, Glenn and Bob at Comcast Sportsnet, brought to you by Coors Light. You can 
email from Anthony in Crown Point, Indiana. What do you guys do during your free time? Well, Anthony, we watch every baseball game we can. The ones we don't watch, we tape. <laughs> when we're not watching baseball, we're on the computer checking out what's going on around baseball. Baseball, baseball, baseball. <laughs> 24 hours a day. Sometimes we just go to the local sandlot and watch the kids play baseball. Cornermen in. They're back up the middle, and Maddox trying to stay out of the double play, but he cannot. Now the Cubs had him at the second and third with no outs, but failed to score. They still lead, however, 5-3. It's all about before and after. Block by block. One neighborhood at a time. Here's before. Here's the after. Before and after. I'm Jim Grawley. I'm Phyllis Caldwell. I'm Alex Fiorst. We're bankers, and we're proud to be part of Bank of America. We take a very direct role in community development in a way that no other bank does. We built that apartment house. We built that school. People who couldn't afford to own a home now can. People who couldn't afford to live in a certain community can move back. These were vacant lots, boarded up houses. Our work is about rebuilding neighborhoods. It's all the result of one company. A decade ago, we set a goal for community development banking. and It was bigger than any bank had ever set. Now that we've expanded into the Northeast, we've doubled that 10-year commitment. To three quarters of a trillion dollars. We see it as an opportunity to rebuild the fabric of a neighborhood. You know how we know success? When we see the flower boxes come back to the neighborhood. Bank of America. Higher standards. Pontiac Grand Prix. Built at the highest ranked plant in North and South America. Vibe. The best selling car in its class. Pontiac G6. Strategic Vision's total quality award winner in its first year. And now, each comes with GM employee pricing for everyone until August 1st. During the Pontiac Employee Discount for Everyone event, buy a first ever G6 starting at $17,997. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. Time now for the Pontiac Sports Night Update. Good afternoon, Pat Boyle, back in our Comcast Sportsnet studios in downtown Chicago. Tonight at U.S. Cellular, the club with the best record in baseball hosts the World Series champion Red Sox. White Sox hurler Mark Burley, 4-1 with a 3.32 ERA lifetime against Boston. He'll be opposed by former Cub Matt Clement. You can see that game right here on Comcast Sports at beginning at 7 o'clock. But now, back to Lennon Bob in Cincinnati. Pat, thank you very much. Eric Milton has made two starts against the Cubs this year. He's gone a total of nine innings and has allowed 22 hits. That's a lot of hits. That's a lot of hits. That's a lot of noise from the Cubs bats. Uh, however, the Cubs have left seven runners on base through the first five innings. You hope that doesn't come back to haunt him. It's hard to fault Greg Maddox for hitting into a double play there. He got a good pitch to hit. Hit it hard, unfortunately, right at the shortstop. So the Cubs unable to get a run in the fifth inning, but Still with a two-run lead. And Milton allowed 11 hits in five innings at Wrigley on April 26th. 11 hits today in four innings. Lopez with the butt, and it's a single. Well, it's hard not to be impressed what we've seen from Felipe Lopez in this series. He's played a very steady defense at shortstop. He swung the bat well, hit the ball to all fields, and just a perfectly executed drag bunt there. Saw Maddox leaning toward third base, anticipating. When he saw Lopez show bunt, he was anticipating he was going to go to the third base side. His first movement was just a slight feint toward third base, and by the time he recovered, Lopez was able to beat it out. Griffey bounces it foul. You think about some of the guys uh, getting into the primes of their careers in the National League, switch hitting shortstops. Raphael for call. Uh, Cesar as Tourist. Jimmy Rollins. Now Felipe Lopez, a first time All Star this year. He has been impressive. He's shown power and seen speed. Terrific bunt. A good chance you're going to see that speed again here. Most teams try to run against Greg Maddox whenever possible when they get that right combination of speed on the bases and trailing by two runs. You got to figure Lopez is going to try to get himself into scoring position at some point in this at bat. 
one guy in that mold, Jose Reyes, switch hitter. Two strikes on Grippy, and Maddox will throw over to first. His last strikeout was against Javier Valentin in the second inning. He has three today. 2,997 for his career. Lopez on the move, fly to left. Merton heading straight in. One out. Look at how Maddox went about working to Ken Griffey Jr. First pitch sinker right down the middle. That's his standard M.O. Then a change up off the plate away. That change up, he scoots it out another six or eight inches off of the outside corner. You have to be careful with off speed pitches to Ken Griffey Jr. because he's got such great plate coverage. He can reach out and hook the ball back to right field. So that time Maddox threw him one change up on the outside corner, then scooted the next one over about six or eight inches. Got the lazy fly ball to left. Kearns with two hits. His average had been at 224 since June 12th because he'd been in the minor leagues. Up nine points tonight. Runner moving again. Another fly ball. Lopez almost to second. Burnett's with the catch. Lopez able to get back in plenty of time. the big shift. And Michael Barrett alerting Greg Maddox as to where the defenders are. Dunn grounded out to the right of second base in the first inning, but it was a shortstop Cedeno throwing him out. You know, it's funny, you know, the shortstop second baseman, they give each other the signs on who's going to cover second in a case of a stolen base. And Cedeno giving the sign to Todd Walker. My guess is it'd be a little difficult for Todd Walker to cover second base yes. at the moment. <laughs> Just a habit. Yeah. You know, teams have always used defensive shifts. There used to be the Ted Williams shift. There's been many other hitters in the history of the game who had an exaggerated defensive shift like this. But I think the biggest difference lately is the second baseman's depth. Not only do they shift over closer to the hole between first and second, but you can clearly see he's playing 20 feet out into right field. Because the ball hit the Todd Walker right there, he's going to have plenty of time to throw Dunn out at first base. Is on the move. Dunn strikes out. Number four for Maddox. Just two away from the milestone. 5 3 Cubs. Can't we stay another day? Sure. Florida. Easy to get to. Hard to leave. Go to Southwest.com for Southwest Airlines $59 internet specials from Chicago Midway to Florida. Purchased by August 4th only at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. Four doors sedan. Four doors sedan. Oh my. The stylish Nissan Altima has a higher residual value than Camry LE. So you can lease the Altima for just $1.99 a month. Check it out.
beer starts out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light. Monday night, join Comcast Sportsnet at 93XRT for an 80s night pre- and post-game party at the Cuffy Bear. Hear live music, enjoy great specials, and have a chance to win great prizes from 93XRT at Comcast Sportsnet. Monday, July 25th, 80s night at Wrigley Field with Deborah Gibson, brought to you by Comcast Sportsnet. Deborah Gibson will perform the national anthem, the seventh inning stretch. A 80s memorabilia will be given away throughout the game. Thanks again to Comcast Sportsnet. Little dire straits. Mm. Money for nothing. I saw Mark Knopfler uh, last week in the Auditorium Theater. It was uh, what a great show he put on. That ain't working. <laughs> So, top of the order here in the sixth. We'll get the rip a little later. Yeah, good part was just coming up there. Harrison one for three on the afternoon. Cubs had a golden chance to get some more in the fifth, second, and third. No outs, but Jason Standridge came on and got out of it. There he comes on a 1-0. No problem for Lopez. One out, Todd Walker, two for three with a three-run homers last time up. Here's a look at that. Three-run bomb back in the fourth. Nothing fastball out over the plate, mid thighs. Bob reached out there and hooked it back to right field. Oh! Outside corner for a strike. Uh, Todd Walker. Uh, we were having a little fun with the uh, email question a little earlier about what we do in our free time, but. I guess we would say we don't have as much free time on the road as people might think. And uh, I know you stay pretty pretty close to the hotel and the ballpark. You'll, you'll take nice long walks in uh, different cities. You, know, you go to a nice restaurant here or there if you have the opportunity. But a lot of times it's hotel, ballpark, and back to the hotel. Mm -hmm. Order up a late night pizza, watch the West Coast game when we're on this side of the country. That's why you take the long walks in the morning to work off the late night pizza. Yeah, I saw you were over in that area the other day and you were like, okay, how do I get back? <laughs> I didn't want to swim back either. <laughs> One, two to Walker. Popped up. Frio had a better angle on it than Valentine. You can see a lot of interesting things, you know, especially back here on the East Coast or Midwest and East Coast. Uh, walking over in Newport, Kentucky yesterday, I saw the home of Brigadier General John Thompson, the inventor of the Thompson submachine gun. And like a lot of weapons, it was uh, invented for use by the military, but unfortunately became uh, the weapon du jour of the gangsters, Al Capone and all his buddies. And uh, Brigadier General John Thompson forever regretted inventing the Thompson machine gun because of uh, what it became identified with later. Said that right on the plaque. It was a Warren Zevon had a song, right? Roland the Headless Thompson Gunner. There you go, right? The Gunner. Okay. So you learn a little something yeah. here in Cincinnati. Well, exercise and education at the same time. <laughs> I understand Carlos Lee has an RBI today early. Brewers with two runs in the first inning in St. Louis. So the two Lees tied for the RBI lead in the National League with 78. Albert Pujols with 77. Two and two with two outs. 
on Lee. The next pitch, he struck him out swinging. And the Cubs go down one, two, three. In fact, first time today, they have sent just three men to the plate. Mark Knopfler, that great riff. Five, three Cubs. Yeah. Look at that, yo-yos. That's the way you do it. Millions of American families rely on Ford. Right now, Ford invites you to join the Ford Family Plan and pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. Until August 1st, you'll get our discounts on the entire family of Ford cars in stock, including the five-star crash safety rated Ford 500. Now get a Ford 500 for just $19,995. That's over $2,800 in savings on the award-winning Ford 500. No hassles, no gimmicks. Visit your local Ford store today and welcome to the family. Hey Cubs fans, with Summer Road Construction, public transportation is a quick, convenient way to get you to the game. Take the train or bus, and the CTA takes you right to the gates of Wrigley Field. And remember, if you do drive, come early, enjoy batting practice, and take advantage of the early bird discount. Come to Soldier Field for the Chicago Sun-Times Bears Family Night, presented by Chase. And on Thursday, August 4th, you'll watch the Bears practice. Followed by a spectacular fireworks show. Be sure to check your Chicago Sun-Times for special two-for-one ticket offers. Tickets are only $5 on Ticketmaster.com or by calling 312-559-1212. I'm proud to build trucks and SUVs to a higher standard. Professional grade. I'm proud to make an SUV with the tightest turning radius. Best V8 fuel economy. Most horsepower in its class. I'm proud to innovate. And I'm proud to offer something we've never done before. Our very own employee discount. You pay what we pay. Not a cent more. Get an 05 Envoy two-wheel drive SLE for just $23,260 with your employee discount. Hurry. Program ends August 1st. Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. After the game, stick around for Cubs postgame live presented by Joe's Crab Shack. Get highlights of all the action and analysis from Dan Plesak. Don't miss Cubs postgame live immediately following the game right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Well, Greg Maddox, two strikeouts away from 3,000. But he is done today, went five innings through just 71 pitches. Not sure if he just uh, was gassed in this hot day or not, but Michael Wurtzi is on for the Cubs here in the sixth inning. So Maddox, two strikeouts away from 3,000, his next scheduled start. Tuesday night at home against the San Francisco Giants. And this half inning of Cubs baseball brought to you by Robert Morris College, real college for the real world. Maddox with a chance for his 314th win. And as we've said many times in the telecast today and throughout the season, and as Greg Maddox has said himself, the most important thing is winning a ball game. Two run lead here in the bottom of the sixth and Scheduled hitters for the Reds this inning. Rich Aurelia, two for two against Maddox today with a home run. Willie Mopena scored a run after reaching on a fielder's choice. And Javier Valentin with a home run. So maybe Dusty Baker, Greg Maddox, both thought that uh, it was time to go to a different arm out there on the mound. The guys coming up for the Reds that had some pretty good swings against Maddox today. Well, Maddox with a chance to get number 3,000 at home which isn't such a bad thing. And of course, last year picked up his 300th win on the road in San Francisco. So he'll face the Giants in his next start. Aurelia strikes out. Good fastball, good location on the fastball. Kneecaps right on the outside corner. Tough pitch to him. Even if you put that ball in play, it's going to be weekly right at somebody. And baseball historians all across the nation right now trying to find out if anyone ever got their 300th win and 3,000th strikeout against the same team. Because Maddox will have that opportunity. with a 1-0 pitch. 
know with Maddox coming out of the game, I thought you were going to say baseball historians all around the country are now going out to mow their lawns. <laughs> no, their work is never done. Cubs bullpen struggled last night. Six runs in five innings. After Carrie Wood left early. was one of those pitchers last night. He only threw a third of an inning. The one guy he faced was Willie Mo Pena. Struck him out with a slider down low and away. Michael has worked on quickening his delivery a little bit. So he strikes out Pena again today. So there you have it. The two strikeouts Greg Maddox needed. Fastball off the plate away. Pena, very undisciplined hitter. How many is Michael Wirtz behind Maddox now? A lot. <laughs> A lot. Team with a two run homer in the fourth inning. Yeah, Michael has worked with Larry Rothschild again, on quickening that delivery and being more aggressive. Another one hit high and deep by Valentin. And a two homer performance. Man, is he hot! Two home runs Sunday that did not start Monday or Tuesday. Last night, he had a home run. He has two today. It's five to four. When you think of this Reds lineup and guys who can really hurt you, his name would not be at the top of the list, but it is this week. Jerry Naren's going to have his hands full keeping this guy out of the lineup. It's obvious that the Reds and Jerry Naren like Jason LaRue behind the plate a lot. If you get that kind of production, it's going to be tough to keep that young man on the bench. Jacob Cruz will pinch hit. Two homer game for Valentin. Two have been for the last five days. No. And Cruz strikes out. Good slider from Michael Wirtz. Strikes out three in the inning. Valentin with a home run. It's now 5 4. to get away now you can fly southwest airlines the airline committed to serving chicago from midway airport to cities in the west for just 84 dollars one way you are now free to move about the country come on joe what's kicking in the kitchen 40 shrimp for 12.99 scampi seared coconut crusted flame grilled Golden fried. 40 shrimp for only $12.99. Joe's new platter is bigger and better than ever. Only Joe's Crab Shack does 40 shrimp for $12.99. It's shrimply irresistible. That's right, 40 scrumptious shrimp for only $12.99. Pontiac Grand Prix, built at the highest ranked plant in North and South America. Vibe, the best selling car in its class. Pontiac G6, Strategic Vision's Total Quality Award winner in its first year. And now, each comes with GM employee pricing for everyone until August 1st. During the Pontiac Employee Discount for Everyone event, buy a 2005 Grand Prix starting at 19143 
You pay what we pay, not a cent more. After the Cubs game, stay tuned for Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Joe's Crab Shack. Get complete analysis from Dan Plesak and hear what Dusty Baker says during his post game remarks. Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Joe's Crab Shack. After the Cubs game on Comcast Sportsnet. Don't miss the Cubs take on the Diamondbacks Friday, July 29th at 120 on Kraft Foods Day at Wrigley Field. Fans have a chance to win gift packages, compliments of Kraft Foods. Kraft Foods, proud sponsor of the Chicago Cubs. Javier Valentin, we mentioned with three career two-homer games. His first multi-homer game was at Wrigley Field, July 22nd of last year. It's almost a year to the day. And both long balls came against Greg Maddox. Well, one of his two home runs today off Maddox, the other one off Michael Wirtz. Todd Coffey on here in the seventh. It's 5-4 Cubs. We saw Coffey in the first game of the series, pitching an inning in two-thirds, gave up four base hits and a run. A little reminiscent of John Rocker, the way he sprints in from that bullpen like a runaway train. to center Griffey back to the warning track and what a catch that is a gold glove play from Ken Griffey Jr. Ramirez really gave it a ride for the ability to make adjustments Ramos thought he got all of this ball. He's posing a little bit there at home plate, then starts jogging to first. Junior changed directions a couple of times, turned his back on the ball at one point. He's able to recover and make the catch right up against that center field fence at the 404 mark. Well, you sure feel like the Cubs are going to need some more runs here today. At one point, they had a one lead but the Reds no Javier Valentin <laughs> hit two home runs to make it 5-4 in the hole Lopez with the throw done came off first to go get it and it's a hit for Barrett his second today Puts this ball in a real good spot. Hard sinker down and in. Swings over the top of it, but chases Lopez deep into that hole. And no chance to get Michael at first base. The throw did pull Dunn off the bag, but I don't believe they would have had him anyway. If you've never seen Todd Coffey before, very unusual in that he comes up into his set position and to check on the runner at first base, he looks over his right shoulder rather than his left shoulder. Pitches out of a very close stance, and it's easier for him to look over his right shoulder. You can see that zipper down the inside of his right elbow. Hit hard, and nice play by Aurelia, but he flipped it away from Lopez. Just tried to go from glove to glove, and the Cubs with two men on. We'll have to take a look again. It's going to be a hit. Burnett's. Did he have time? Yeah, it looked like he had time to go to the throwing hand, but he tried to make a fancy play, and it cost him. Well, you know, a middle infielder leaves his feet like that. Uh, it seems like mentally you ought to tell yourself, I'm conceding the double play. There's no way we're going to get two. I had to leave my feet to die for this ball. Let's make sure and get that lead runner. But Aurelia tried to make the backhanded glove-to-glove -glove toss and got hung up in the webbing of his glove and just flipped it over on the left side of the infield. Action in the Reds pen. Brian Shackle for the lefty. And again, we assume David Weathers is not available again. He left the game the other night, two nights ago, with lower back strain. We have not yet seen Kent Merker be in action in this series.
Alex, he didn't know where it was at first, but it was in front of him. Valentin with a, a feeble effort there to block that ball in the dirt. It was very fortunate for the Reds that ball didn't get past. He just kind of waved backhanded at him. The ball looked like it hit him on the inside of the right thigh. Turned his head and everything. That's, uh, that's not the kind of form you like to see out of your catcher behind the plate. Maybe that's why he's not playing as much as he should based on the way he's swinging the bat. To Cedeno, fly to right. Kearns backpedaling. He has it. Barrett tags in, ends up at third. And then they're at the corners with two down. A solid day for Matt Merton. A walk, a single, and a run, and then an intentional walk. And nobody in the on deck circle right now for the Cubs. I see Todd Hollinsworth standing down there in the shadows. Nafi Perez now making his way up to the stairs with a helmet on. Maybe another switch hitting shortstop in the National League. A day off thus far, but you get a pinch hit appearance here in this inning. If Mert can keep it alive, Will Oman, the lefty, is up. I wasn't trying to slight Nafee earlier in the discussion, talking more about younger switch hitting shortstops. Side corner strike. Good heat at 93 from Coffee. One and one. have been very positive thus far for Matt Merton and just his sixth major league start. And he's gotten a lot of chances to play because the Cubs have faced a lot of left handed starters lately. The Cubs have not run much on the bases lately either but this perhaps would be a situation where Jeremy Bernitz may try to break over there at first base draw a throw at second. Ball strike three. Well, it might have been outside, but Larry Vanover called it a strike. Seventh inning stretch time, 5-4 Cubs. It's here, Suzuki Smart Summer Savings, where more and more people are discovering Forenza. Forenza. Forenza by Suzuki. Forenza's got it all. Style, function, and America's number one warranty. And it comes with more room. And more features than Civic. Who says you can't have it all? Suzuki is on a roll with great cars, great deals, and America's number one warranty. So don't miss Suzuki Smart Summer Savings. It was the smartest move I ever made. Forenza. Get the Forenza for just $11,994 during Suzuki Smart Summer Savings. molecules delivers non-stop protection throughout the life of your oil not just oil pennzoil get a $15 mastercard gift card when you buy a case of pennzoil platinum motor oil at autozone chevy's proud to have the best-selling full-size suvs five years in a row like tahoe with best-in-class fuel economy we've always broken the rules now we're rewriting them with the Chevy employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. Now get an 05 Chevy Trailblazer LS two-wheel drive with an MSRP of $27,150 for a Chevy employee discount price of $21,417 after cash back. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer today. Hi, I'm
I'm Carlos Amada from the Chicago Cubs, and you're watching Comcast for Net. 5-4 Cubs, last of the seventh, and Michael Wirtz is going to try to get through another inning working in relief of Greg Maddox. A lot of people looking for relief today. It's a hot one here in Cincinnati, and we got a call from Ed Hardick, Cubs historian, and he looked it up, and we're talking about Greg Maddox facing uh, the Giants next week. No pitcher has won his 300th and struck out his 3,000th against the same team. So now you know. So now we know. I knew Ed would know. Top of the order for the Reds. Friel, Lopez, and Griffey against Wirtz. Michael gave up a home run in the sixth. He struck out the other three hitters he faced. Right center, and Burdett's won't be able to get to it before it lands. Not that it makes any difference on a given day, but the Giants have the fewest strikeouts offensively of any team in the National League. Dusty Baker is coming out, but he's heading toward the home plate umpire, Larry Vanover, so double switch time. We talk so much, Bob, about momentum, and right now the Reds clearly have it in this game. And it's not just the runs they have scored. We talked about that that fifth inning when the Cubs could not get a run home after getting the first two men into scoring position. And this is a big test here for the bullpen. Trying to get the final nine outs with a one run lead. Ford called to the pin. Holman coming in. Perez as well to play short. We'll be back. Pontiac Grand Prix, built at the highest ranked plant in North and South America. Vibe, the best selling car in its class. Pontiac G6, Strategic Vision's Total Quality Award winner in its first year. And now, each comes with GM employee pricing for everyone until August 1st. During the Pontiac Employee Discount for Everyone event, buy a first ever G6 starting at $17,997. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. There are thousands of faces at Robert Morris College, and behind each one of them is a dream. Do you see yourself? Choose your passion, and you can graduate in three years or less. There are hundreds of opportunities behind our doors, one for every dream. Your dream. Accessible. Affordable. Attainable. Robert Morris College. Real college for the real world. You can haul almost anything in a Toyota truck. I haul tools, dirt bikes, sheetrock. Bring it in the full-size Tundra with a payload of 2,025 pounds. Back it up. Or drive a Tacoma, Motor Trend's 2005 Truck of the Year. Unbreakable. Next time you have a big job to haul, do it in a Toyota truck. Once I hauled the whole state of Illinois. How do you think Canada got there? Get zero financing or up to 2,000 cash on Tundra. Or zero financing or 1,750 cash on 4Runner. Toyota, moving forward. Well, Napy didn't get a chance to pinch hit in the top of this inning, but he will lead off for the eighth inning in the ninth spot. And will Ullman is on to do the pitching. Put in the seventh spot in the lineup. Runner at first is Friel with very good speed. Lopez at the plate. And I, I wonder if part of the thought here was with Friel at first get a left-handed pitcher in there now, of course, you want Ullman facing Griffey next, but you turn Lopez around, he's much better from the left side than the right as well. He's 100 points better from the left side of the plate, so this serves a few different purposes here. Hopefully you hold Friel over there at first, turn Lopez around to his weaker side, and then you have the lefty in the game to face Griffey. one pitch is high. Has 25 years old. Ooh. 
squares to bunt. And he looks at ball two, two and one. Roberto Navoa getting ready. And just a guess on my part, but I wouldn't think we would see Navoa until you get down to Rich Aurelia's spot. The reason I say that is you obviously want Omen in there on Ken Griffey Jr. And you've got Austin Kearns, a right-handed hitter, following Griffey Jr., but he's so hot today, seeing the ball so well, I don't think it makes any difference whether you have a righty or a lefty on Kearns, but then you'd also have the lefty to face Adam Dunn after Austin Kearns. Pickoff attempt at first base here. A little thumb flip by Michael Barrett. It doesn't mean knock the hitter down. Used to. Most teams use that as a sign for the pickoff attempt at first base. Slider. 2-1 with Brio running in the throw to nobody covering second. And Brio ends up at third. I don't know what happened, but it cannot happen. Barrett did all he could. He threw to second, and there was nobody there to accept the throw. Boy, and that is a bad error on Michael Barrett. That's a, a, a personal thing and a selfish thing, but when a catcher makes a throw right over the base and nobody breaks to cover, how can that be an error on the catcher? Now, we saw the sign for a slider, and usually with a left-handed slider to a right-handed hitter, you want your shortstop to stay home because he's probably going to hit that ball to the left side. Normally, that would be the second baseman's cover right there. But Walker never really broke at all for second base, and Nafee was very late. Infield in, 2-2 two, two to Lopez, and it's in the dirt. And for the Cubs, their ninth error of their last eight games, but I agree with you, Ian. The error goes to the catcher, but that's not his fault. Well, and that is the kind of mental mistake that, uh, you know, a team trying to work their way into wild card contention, you just can't make those kind of mistakes. Three, two to Lopez. Right side, knocked down by Lee. Only good news is Creel held up. Lopez reaches. Not the worst thing in the world because the runner at third held up. First and third, nobody out. And an error on Lee, so two errors in the inning. And it looked like with the naked eye that Derek may have taken his eye off that ball just for a second to try to get a glimpse as to whether Friel was running from third base on that high chopper. He's able to knock it down, keep it in front right there. Todd Walker picks it up quickly as Friel has to hold at third base. You'd have loved to have gotten it out there because then you could have possibly walked Griffey to set up a double play. Although you have the matchup, I guess you want with Omen against Griffey. We'll see how the Cubs set it up defensively. Looks like they might concede a run if they can get a double play. First and third, no outs. Cubs hanging on by their fingernails right now. If he went, strike one. Griffey, much like Adam Dunn, a guy that doesn't hit into a lot of double plays because he hits a lot of fly balls as that loft swing gets the ball in the air more often than on the ground. All the red 
six runs to this point via the home run. They've hit three today, Aurelia with one, Valentin with two. Almonds 2-1. Bowman loses Ken Griffey Jr. We probably will see Navoa at that point to face Kearns with the bases loaded. Can't worry about Adam Dunn at that point. You have to worry about the hitter at the plate. Good slider. Three and two. Biggest pitch of the game to this point coming up. Three and two, first and third, nobody out time called at the plate. We'll see if Lopez is running from first. He is not. Fouled away. I'm sure, the Reds thinking worst case scenario if Griffey strikes out, you don't want that guy to get thrown out at second. All of a sudden, two outs in the inning as they try to tie this one up. And they've got their hottest hitter in the lineup in the on deck circle. They want to definitely give him a chance to swing the bat with runners on base. Because even a double play would tie it. Another 3 2, and they are low. Oman missed in that at bat. He didn't miss by much. The grippy patience. And there are three men on, and here comes Dusty. Now you think about this inning for Will Oman. He had the stolen base and the throwing error, nobody covering second, allowing Friel to get to third, and then an error by the normally sure handed Derek Lee. The walk to Griffey, and all of a sudden the bases are loaded. Ford call to the pen. Roberto Navoa coming in. We'll be back. Can't we stay another day? Sure. Florida. Easy to get to, hard to leave. Go to Southwest.com for Southwest Airlines $59 internet specials from Chicago Midway to Florida. Purchased by August 4th, only at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. discount for everyone. You pay what we pay. Ever see people do this with their cell phone? They're just trying to get a good signal. Switch to U.S. Cellular. Our network is so good it comes with a 30-day guarantee. So stop doing this or this or this. U.S. Cellular. We connect with you. Now, buy one Motorola camera phone for $29.95 and get a second one free. Now, Will Oman walking Ken Griffey to load the bases. And Roberto Navoa called out here in the seventh. And this is a very tight spot. Bases loaded, no outs. And you mentioned it. Austin Kearns hit 342 at AAA in 28 games. Back in the big leagues, and he's two for three today. And again, it looks like the Cubs up the middle. Oh, the force at every base. They would take the double play. And the thought here is even if you give up the tying run, just try to limit the damage. Just try to get some outs. Cornerman in. And a pitch to Kearns. Ball one. 
And of course, you have to throw strikes in this spot. There's a bouncer to Ramirez. He will throw to the plate. And the relay throw. Not in time. Very close at first. Derek Lee's convinced. Uh, Jim Wolf with a call. Dusty's going to come out. That was very close, to be honest with you. I thought they had him. Boy, it sure looked like it with the naked eye. Just the timing of the play with the runner and uh, Derek Lee receiving that throw from Michael Barrett. Man. When Navoa gets what he's looking for here, a ground ball to one of the corners. You can see Ramirez charges, gets his momentum going toward home. Friel, the runner. Uh, that's a good call. Good call. Kearns did beat it down there. You can see Friel coming into the play. Watch him go after Michael Barrett there. That's breaking up a double play, just like you do in the middle of the infield. Yep, you're right. He was there. So Jim Wolf all over that call at first. mentioned earlier Dunn is a tough guy to get to hit into a double play he's only grounded into two all year take one more look at Ryan Frio coming into the plate getting after Michael Barrett watch you guys in the background they think they've got an out at first base Dusty frustrated going to come out and argue but as we saw clearly by the replay Jim Wolf made the proper call the other thing you think about here, and you have a strikeout pitcher and a hitter with a penchant for strikeouts as well. This will be a big spot for a punch out, and time called. Barrett's going to head out and chat with his pitcher. One strike on Adam Dunn. We don't want any mistakes here at all. Napier and Aramis coming to the mound to help translate for Michael Barrett, Roberto Navoa, just to make sure they've got their signals straight. You don't want to cross up, risk a wild pitch pass ball right here. With an offense like this Cincinnati offense, kind of an all or nothing proposition. This inning could go a lot of different ways. Navoa trying to find a way to get out of it. And two strikes on Dunn. Not that great with the bases loaded for Adam Dunn in his career. One and two. Look at Navoa. He can't believe it. Navy's going to head in. Smart move by the veteran just to say forget about it. Doesn't matter now. Boy, it's understandable. I, I'm not sure where this ball missed. Ooh. Right on the corner. Boy, I'll tell you what, Roberto Navoa needs to learn not to do that. The one, two, and it's even. There are umpires in this league that will rip off that mask and say, well, you thought that was bad. You know, throw three more right there. I'll call them balls, too. Under the category of showing up an umpire, and they do not like that. Two, two to Dunn. You got him. So Navoa with a huge strikeout, one out away from escaping. The 20th time in his career, Adam Dunn has struck out with the bases loaded. He got fortunate on the pitch two before. Rich Aurelia with two outs. Strike one.
Rich Aurelia likes to guess in certain counts. He will be a good breaking ball hitter if you throw a breaking ball for a strike. Keep that slider off the outside corner. This is with a fastball away that time. Constantly looking to hit a fastball, but if he gets a count where he guesses breaking ball, he can hit that pitch as well. Still not out of the woods here in the seventh inning. Aurelia with two hits, including a home run today. And Hairston Dodge makes a catch! What a play by Hairston! And Novoa gets out of it! Some shaky defense to start this inning by the Cubs, but what a play! 5-4. starts out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light. Chevy's proud to be the number one selling passenger car brand in America. We have nine cars with at least 30 highway miles per gallon. We've always broken the rules. Now we're rewriting them with the Chevy employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. Now get an 05 Cobalt Coupe with an MSRP of $14,190 for a Chevy employee discount price of $12,471. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer today. At Geico.com, you can handle all your car insurance needs online. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. <laughs> Seriously, we apologize. We had no idea you guys were still around. Yeah, next time maybe do a little research. <laughs> Gentlemen, are we ready to order? I'll have the roast duck with the mango salsa. I don't have much of an appetite, thank you. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. What a seventh inning, and this is how it ended. Great effort by Jerry Hairston Jr. Got a late break on the ball, but made up for it at the end. The diving catch. Wow, talk about a momentum shift. The Reds appeared to have the Cubs on the ropes right there. Navoa didn't get the call on Adam Dunn on what he thought should have been a strike three. Came back to strike him out anyway, and then Aurelia's bid for a base hit and a couple of RBIs stolen away by the diving catch by Jerry Hairston. So the hope now is that the Cubs offense can get some more runs. They have a one-run lead. Yeah, that was only the seventh inning, six outs to go for the Cubs. <laughs> but when you give Hairston a ton of credit, Roberto Navoa, for getting out of it, he came on with the bases loaded, no outs, and did not give up a run. Boy, and you're right, that inning started in an ugly, ugly fashion. Real reaching, steal second base, nobody covers second base. The ball goes into center field for an error on Michael Barrett. Derek Lee with a rare error at first base. A walk to Ken Griffey Jr. You got to work your way through the middle of the Reds lineup, and they were able to do it without a run. <laughs> and we have two innings to go. <laughs> first at bat for Napy today. Greg Maddox, if you joined us late, started with five innings, struck out four, which leaves him two strikeouts shy of 3,000. Fly ball down the right field line. Kearns will make the catch. And a good hand for Hairston from the Cubs fans here in the ballpark today. He's still, you know, learning the position in center field. He's been an infielder his whole life. Last year with the Orioles played the outfield. And now in center for the Cubs with Corey Patterson back in the minor leagues. 
terrific athlete and known as a very good defensive second baseman and you can see the athleticism and this got a great jump right off the bat I got to be honest I, I assumed that a really a flare was going to drop just didn't look like Hairston was going to be able to get to it but what a diving catch. And sometimes that's how an inning can go. You work so hard to put yourself on the brink of getting out of the inning, and then a guy just flares one, dunks it into a gap to tie it up, or in the case of Aurelia, probably would have given the Reds the lead. So not only did it save the lead for the Cubs, it probably would have given the Reds the advantage. You'd like to think it'd be a momentum shifter as well. You'd like to see the Cubs come up here offensively and another point or two on the board. Roll to Lopez. It's short. And here's the thrown out. And there's some plays that are hard to quantify as far as how many runs did it save ultimately. I mean, that was a two-run play. Instead of being down 6-5, you're still up 5-4. And if that ball gets by Harrison, who knows? And of course, you never know what the following hitters would do either. You can try, you know, the inning continues. You give a, another red or two an opportunity to swing the bat. I mean, Valentin was two hitters away there after Willie Mopania. We know what he's done today. Oh, that's right. He's got to hit again today, right? Good. Now, the last runs scored by the Cubs were as a result of the three-run homer hit by Walker back in the fourth inning. You can look at a box score and see a team that has lost a game eight to six and say, well, it wasn't the offense's fault because they scored six runs. And while that is, I think, generally true, there are sometimes when you score a lot of runs early and you have a lead and then you don't add on. That's very frustrating for a manager. And the Cubs want to avoid that fate today. I don't want you to have to relive some bad memories, but I'm sure there are times where your team would get up five, six to one. You go to the bullpen early, you just feel that momentum shift, and then your team just can't get any more runs for whatever reason. That is a frustrating feeling. It really is. They just seem to go flat offensively, and certainly a lot of the credit has to be given to the opposing bullpen when they're able to hold your offense down like that. But... Q shot to short, barehanded by Lopez, and a good play. Ends up face down on the turf after the throw. Ball was snaking along out towards short. He might be injured. And he gets up by four Cubs. Nothing's hotter. Cadillac. Breakthrough. Employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay. Nobody buys cars for less than GM employees. Fact. Now you can save thousands with the same GM employee discount. At RZA Chevrolet in Bridgeview. That's right. Save thousands on a new vehicle with huge GM factory authorized employee discount. Come into RZA today and you pay what we pay. It's GM authorized employee pricing. Direct to you for a limited time only at RZA Chevrolet in Bridgeview. RZA the only place to buy. to find that new or used car in Chicago using the newspaper? You must have a lot of time on your hands. Oh, Chicago, there has to be a better way. There is. It's vhicks.com. Research your next car, get a free price quote, and find a local dealer. At vhicks.com, all roads lead to happiness. vhicks.com, so easy and no mess. vhicks.com, Chicagoland's roadmap to the automotive world. Now for the Cadillac Sports Night Update. 
Good afternoon, Pat Boyle, back at our Comcast Sportsnet studios in downtown Chicago. The NHL Players Association will hold a press conference today following the outcome of the players' ratification vote on that new collective bargaining agreement. You can see that press conference in its entirety right here on Comcast Sportsnet after the game. But now, back to Lennon Bob, ballpark. Wait a minute, they've switched spots. Wasn't he on the left before? The paint's still working, though. Yeah, that must be the kind of paint they use, like, on appliances and stuff that's heat-resistant. <laughs> I thought that would have melted a long time ago. Willie Montpena against Roberto Navoa. 5-4 Cubs, bottom of the eighth. Back two strikes. A lot going on today here in Cincinnati. Still a long way to go, but if it holds up, Maddox would get the win. He would also end up with a game winning RBI. He had the go ahead hit in the fourth inning to make it two to one. Down the river. Shot through the hole. That's the thing about the seventh inning. It was a leadoff single by Brian Friel. It was the only hit the Reds had that inning. Here he is. Javier Valentin. Two home runs his last two times up. further around to right center every bit as high as the first one he's very quick inside little short arms he stands close to the plate and if you try to come in on him you better make sure you get it in there because he's very quick he can keep that ball fair down the right field line three home runs his last four at bats in this series Casey is on deck. The pitch. 3 and 0. Mets blasted the Padres in shade 12 to nothing today. A final. Jake Peavy starting that game for the Padres. Dempster is up in the bullpen. And there's a chance should Valentin reach base here that Jerry Nairn could possibly pull Sean Casey back and send up Ray Almeido instead to put down a bunt. Now Jake Peavy got knocked around five innings, seven runs, seven hits. Kazi She got the win for the Mets. He's three and eight. Peavy is eight and four. Suffering the defeat. Brewers leading at St. Louis 5 0 in the fourth inning. Valentin walks. First two men are on. More trouble for the Cubs bullpen here in the eighth inning. Now Casey's already made his way up to the plate, but he has not been announced yet. Jerry Naren calling him back. He's going to send Almeido up there to put down a sacrifice bunt right here and save Casey possibly for another at bat later in the ball game. Casey was real anxious to get in that batter's box. Almost ran up there from the on deck circle. Mark Berry, the third base coach, had to wave him back to the bench. Once you're announced, that's it. So if Casey had been announced, he would have had to hit. Or if he had come out, he wouldn't have been able to participate. 
you know, there's a very definite protocol when a hitter, uh, for example, Casey right there, even though he had walked up to the plate and was almost in the batter's box, the umpire will look at the manager, the manager will point at the player, and only then is that guy officially in the ball game. I mean, there have been instances uh, just like that where Casey walks up to the plate and the PA announcer may announce it to the stadium, but if the umpire hasn't received notification from the manager, it's, it's not official. Tough play, Barrett with a throw. Just got him. Cubs were staring at another bases loaded situation, but a nice play by Michael on the sack bunt by Olmedo. Just a perfect bunt out there. Really, Michael Barrett, the only guy that has a play on this ball. Ramos Ramirez was waiting to read the play to see whether he should retreat to third base. He ends up in no man's land. Navoa couldn't get there. And a nice play and a nice sell over there at first base by Todd Walker. Caught that ball and came off the bag as if it was an easy out at first. All right, Sean, now you're up. Can Navoa do it again? He escaped in the seventh. Second and third, one out. See the infield alignment. Here's a pitch. Ball one. Dodgers with a one nothing lead of the ninth at Philadelphia. There's been a lot of drama here today, hasn't there? A lot of drama. And it hasn't stopped yet. Outside. 2 and 0. The on deck hitter is Felipe Lopez. We know Mike Remlinger pitched two innings last night in the ball game, so he is probably unavailable today. Glendon Rush pitched an inning in the third as well because if you had one more left-hander to use, this would be the situation to bring him in to face Sean Casey, turn Lopez around to the right side where he's considerably weaker, and then Ken Griffey Jr. after Lopez if you get that far. We know Navoa has been Dusty's go-to guy late in the ball game to set it up for Dempster, so he's going to stick with his right-hander. Kick and the 2 1 pitch, 3 and 1. Well, a walk here is not the worst thing. You don't want to come right down Main Street on Sean Casey and give him a cookie that he can drive into the gap somewhere. If you do happen to lose him on a base on balls here, it does set up a potential double play. Casey, Pena the runner at third. Valentin is out at second. And a block has been called on Navoa. And the game is tied. And it's five. Two on Casey, Valentin now at third, and the infield in. Here's a pitch and a walk. Well, it's 
see what Navoa does here. Michael Barrett went through the series of signs with the runner at second base. This is just still digging in. There he started. You saw him come up with the upper body and then stop. Once you start your movement, you have to continue or immediately break contact with the rubber with your right foot before doing anything else. But Navoa started up and then stopped. Argument from the Cubs. So Jose Macias has come in to play second. Gonna go to the closer right now in a tie game. Fourth call to the pen, first and third for the Reds with one out of the eighth. out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light. I'm proud to build trucks and SUVs to a higher standard. Professional grade. I'm proud to make an SUV with the tightest turning radius. Best V8 fuel economy. Most horsepower in its class. I'm proud to innovate. And I'm proud to offer something we've never done before. Our very own employee discount. You pay what we pay. Not a cent more. Get an 05 Yukon two-wheel drive SLE for just $29,208 with your employee discount. Hurry, program ends August 1st. Hey, hey, Whew. yeah. You look relaxed for somebody in your condition. Yeah, it's because I have Aflac. What do you mean? Well, when I'm hurt and miss work, Aflac gives me cash to help pay bills. My health insurance does it. You mean like car payments? Mm-hmm. Electric bills? Mm-hmm. Or the rent? Yeah. Huh. Even food. Chinese is here. Great. I love duck. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Well, Roberto Novoa got out of a bases loaded, no out jam in the seventh inning. Here in the eighth, walking in the tying run. A little hitch. And that was it. There's really nothing you could even argue there. It was very obvious what he had done. He'd started up and then stopped. Jose Macias comes in as part of a double switch. He'll play second base and bat in the seventh spot in the lineup. Ryan Dempster now on to pitch. He'll hit in the second spot. They're looking for a ground ball double play here to escape further damage in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, a couple of very high stress innings for the Cubs bullpen. A run in here in the eighth, first and third, one out. Cubs want a double play to get out of it. Felipe Lopez runs very well. And a pitch to him. Fastball misses. Work Tuesday night, a scoreless night. No decision today for Greg Maddox with five innings. Right back to Dempster off him. The throw's going to go to first. And now to second, Casey is safe. Now, Casey wasn't really running at first as it was off Dempster. Ryan, of course, the ball goes off. You're just trying to get it out. He would have had a shot at Casey at second. As it is, two outs of the inning. So you just get one. That's all you really want. Casey stopped after the ball was hit to Dempster. So he wouldn't have had a double play opportunity either way. 
I mean, they could have had the force at second on Casey. As you see, Valentin stays at third base. Dempster never checked the runner at second. Really, that was the only way they were going to be able to turn two was to get the out at first on Lopez as quickly as possible and then hope you catch Casey before he gets to second base. If you throw to second to get the lead runner, Lopez beats it out at first. So Griffey will be intentionally walked. This will be the fourth walk the last two innings. Two outs. How's your stomach? Wow, this has been something the last two innings. The Cubs are very fortunate right now to be in a tie. I think this is the first time Austin Kearns has ever faced Ryan Dempster. Hit. Valentin is in. Casey right behind him. Going to be a play there. And it gets away as Barrett is bowled over by Casey. Griffey's going to be safe as he gets back to third. And it's 7 to 5. Austin Kearns, his first game back from the minors, comes up huge here in the eighth inning. Hit ball right back up the middle. Hurston, a lot of momentum going, gets off a good throw to home plate, but it short hops Michael Barrett, who's trying to hang in there against Sean Casey. Casey does not run well. Better throw or a better hop, rather, to Michael Barrett. They've got a chance to get him there at the plate, but you'll see where this throw bounces. On the dirt right in front of Michael Barrett, took a bad hop up into his chest, wasn't able to hang on. So Dunn will be walked. Three runs here in the eighth inning as the Reds have the lead for the second time today. And they have erased a 5-1 deficit. This is the second time this year the Cubs have had a 5-1 lead in this ballpark and have not been able to hold it. The Reds have been a very good come from behind team. They have come back from deficits of three runs or more to win 13 times the most in the major leagues. Larry Rothschild out, and the bases are full yet again. Take one more look at that base hit, and Afi Perez from his shortstop position takes a real shallow line to this ball. You see him coming in and towards second base. And the ball just does get by. If he goes directly to his left along the edge of the outfield grass there, at least he'd be able to knock that ball down and limit the damage to only one run, but took a very shallow line and the ball got by him. On April 18th, the Cubs had a 5-1 lead and ended up dropping a 7-6 decision. And now it's 7-5 here in the eighth. Strike one on Aurelia. It was robbed and a great diving catch by Jerry Hairston to end the seventh. Now the only good news here is Derek Lee will lead off the night. Lee Ramirez and Barrett. Cubs are down two. And Ryan Dempster trying to keep the Reds right where they are. And give the Cubs an opportunity in the night.
two and two on Aurelia. Well, the Reds have just suffocated the Cubs with base runners the last two innings. Nine base runners. Kick and the pitch. It's full. Line, Adam Dunn is at first base. If he were running from first to second, he'd be called out for going out of the baseline, but he's starting way back behind the baseline as he breaks to second base. See that happen with runners more often at second base who will lead off behind the baseline to give themselves a better angle rounding third, but Dunn doing the same thing over at first base. He's a good 10 or 12 feet behind the baseline. Still three and two on Aurelia. Ninth hitter in this inning. Here comes Dempster. I have a shot here. Just over our booth. If we catch it, it's an out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really throwing hard that one at 97. <laughs> Tenth pitch coming up to Aurelia. He scores, throw going to third, and Ramirez can't handle it. Two runs in. Nine to five. Kearns with a two-run single, two batters ago, and then Aurelia with a long at bat. He knocks in two. Five big ones here in the inning for Cincinnati. Just got to tip your cap to Rich Aurelia right there. Good long at bat, short, quick swing to put that ball in play. And once again, it looked like the Cubs had a play on Dunn at third base, but Harrison's throw once again, very similar to the one to Michael Barrett. A very tough short hop. Hits just about a foot out in front of Aramis Ramirez. All he can do is just block it. Started the inning with a single. Scored on the ball by Navoa to tie it. And the walks have been a killer in this inning. Including the intentional walk to Griffey. Three guys who walked ended up scoring. Sergio Mitre is starting to throw. Now well, with this one getting away, that's just uh, to possibly come in and pick up Ryan Dempster here, save him some pitches in the event that he's needed tomorrow. 
already thrown 26 pitches here in the inning. He's only gotten one out, and that was the bullet line drive that hit off him out there on the mound. He was able to throw to first base to get Felipe Lopez. in the American League Toronto beats Seattle 6 3 in Cleveland all over the Royals 10 1. The Reds with eight unanswered runs on a 9 5 lead that almost hit Javier Valentin in the on deck circle. stays in that on deck circle. He's had a big day, a couple of home runs, three RBIs, drawn a walk. I want to see him again. Yeah, the exact number. I think over 60 pitches have been thrown by the Cubs the last two innings. That's the final one of the game as Pena strikes out. But the Reds get five runs to the ninth. It's nine to five. Show off your pride with official Chicago Cubs merchandise. Hats, t-shirts, jerseys, jackets, and more. Let the world know who your favorite team is. Order your official Chicago Cubs merchandise today. Call 773-404-CUBS or go to Cubs.com. Wear your Chicago Cubs gear with pride. Final question. A six-letter word for free installation. Felco! Get free installation at Feldco. Save thousands on top quality Feldco replacement windows with no payments until winter. Get Feldco quality and installed free. It's an easy call. Feldco's the right answer. Free installation ends July 31st. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feldco. Monday, the Cubs are primed to begin the homestand on a high note when they host the San Francisco Giants at Wrigley, followed by Cubs Post Game Live. Cubs Giants, Monday night at 7. Get your game on Comcast Sports now. The Nissan Quest. Why do they call it a minivan? It's big on confidence. It's big on innovation. It's big on safety. So what's with the mini? How about the price? For a limited time, lease the 2005 Nissan Quest 3.5 for only $279 a month. Confidence, innovation, safety, big idea. Cubs fans, put on your rally caps for an exciting finish. Brought to you by New Finish Car Polish and the number one rated scratch remover, Scratch Doctor. Let's check out the Feldco upcoming schedule at St. Louis coming up for three to end this trip and then back home for a seven game homestand that starts. Monday night against the San Francisco Giants. We'll have that one for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet, 7 o'clock Central. All kinds of changes for the Cincinnati Reds. The most important one on the mound, Matt Belisle. He is the pitcher. Let's see. We've got Aurelia at third. Omedo at second. Sean Casey stays in to play first. Adam Dunn goes out to left. This is not spring training by any stretch, but a ton of defensive changes for the Reds here in the night. And it feels that way right now. Yeah, Willie Mopena made the last out there in the bottom half of the eighth inning, and the pitcher has been inserted into his spot in the lineup, that seven hole, and musical chairs after that. Cubs hoping for rally time here in the ninth inning. Yeah, we added it up the last two innings, the seventh and the eighth. The Cubs bullpen threw upwards of 70 pitches. Very long innings. They get out of it in the seventh. Navoa did a great job, but then five runs in the eighth for the Reds. And 
you look at the last two games, the Cubs bullpen is giving up too many runs. Today, six runs. And six runs last night as well. 3-0, and so Derek Lee trying to start a rally here in the ninth. Graves was designated. The Reds may have used a closer by committee. That's a strike three and two. This is not a safe situation. But Merker, Weathers, and Belial all have saves since. Derek does not like this called strike, and you can't blame him a bit. Javier Valentin reaching down below the knees to catch that ball. Driven into center. Grippy with the running catch. Boy, you're right. That 3 1 looked way low, especially on a guy who's 6 5. It's the kind of game where it would be real easy to say something on your way back to the dugout, but. Eric just puts his heads down, runs back. Junior with another nice running catch. A little bit of a snow cone there. Almost came out of the glove. Final is Philly Dodgers one, Phillies nothing. to left and a home run is 25th nine to six fourth home run of the series and for the Cubs 11 home runs in his four game series for Ramirez six home runs his last seven games overall one of the fastest home runs we've seen in this series a hanging breaking ball hit on a line or Heineken home run replay just a bullet hit up there into the left field stands well, Dallas Perez uh, got the win for the Dodgers John Lieber a tough luck loser he went eight innings gave up one run it was the only run scored in that game Mato over to Casey. Cubs down to their final out. Well, they won the first two games of this series. Cincinnati won last night 9-3 and leading here today 9-6. They try to complete another big comeback. It'll be their 14th win this year which they had erased a deficit of three or more runs. Ramirez with six home runs this year against the Reds. home run but the Cubs come up short the final score Cincinnati 9 Cubs 6 
And our Hyundai player of the game, Austin Kearns, first game back from the minor leagues. He ended up with the go-ahead RBI hit, a two-run single in the eighth inning. A lot of stars for the Reds in the game today offensively, but Austin Kearns coming back from exile in AAA to lead him to a victory today. Tough loss for the Cubs today, and standing by at our Comcast Sportsnet studios, Pat Boyle. All right, Len, thank you. Dan Plezik and I will uh, break down this difficult setback next on Joe's Crab Jack presents Cubs Post Game Live. It's a busy day right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Coming up, we'll carry the NHL Players Association press conference following the outcome of the players' ratification vote on a new CBA. Then tonight at 7, Mark Burley and the White Sox host the world champion Red Sox. We'll have a live preview from the cell a little bit later on. Plus, legendary actor Mr. T and Musa Muhammad will be live in studio on Chicago Tribune Live. That's at 5.30. But now, back to Len Casper to wrap things up in Cincinnati. Pat, thank you very much. Brian Shackelford with the win, his first major league win. Roberto Navoa takes the loss. He drops 2-2-3. Two, two, and three. So for Bob Brenly and our entire crew here in Cincinnati, great work by Bob Albrecht, our producer and director, Tamara Anderson, our associate producer, Audrey Whitley, our stage manager, and our crew here in Cincinnati. Goodbye, final score, Reds 9, Cubs 6. Our next Cubs telecast Monday night from Wrigley against the Giants, 7 o'clock Central Time. Stay tuned for Joe's Crab Shack postgame live. You've been watching Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet. Millions of American families rely on Ford. Right now, Ford invites you to join the Ford Family Plan and pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. Until August 1st, you'll get our discounts on the entire family of Ford cars in stock, including Focus with a 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Now, get a Focus for just $10,280. That's over $3,700 in savings on a quick and fuel-efficient Focus. No hassles, no gimmicks. Visit your local Ford store today, and welcome to the family. It's a wonderful world I'm just walking on air Talk of heaven on earth I've got more than my share Haven't got a care Happy Rico Dependability moves your ideas forward It's a wonderful Changes world Changes too Loving wonderful starts out this cold, it ends up this refreshing. Coors Light. Hyundai's winning SUV sales event has been held over, and you can still save big on our award-winning SUVs, including the new Hyundai Tucson, winner of Strategic Vision's 2005 Total Quality Award with six standard airbags, or the V6 Hyundai Santa Fe, winner of Strategic Vision's Total Value Award, all backed by America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Hurry and save at Hyundai's winning SUV sales event, now held over at Hyundai. Get a 2005 Hyundai Santa Fe with $2,000 cash back at your local Hyundai dealer. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Farquhar. How are we today? Let's just take a look, shall we? Uh, oh, it's a big gap. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could drill a hard one right up the middle. Mm -hmm. We're going inside. Bow! Yes! It's out of there! No! It's out of there! Yes! Yes! Oh! Are you fan enough? Nobody does baseball better than Comcast Sportsnet. Catch the Cubs all season long. More games, more news, more passion. Thank you. Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. Nonstop service to over 59 destinations. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Robert Morris College, real college for the real world. Pontiac. 
10 models, each one designed for action. Hyundai, driven by a commitment to quality that lets them offer America's best warranty. Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Your friends at Jack Daniels remind you to please drink responsibly. Cadillac and the all-new STS Breakthrough. Visit your local Cadillac dealer. Rico, how well do you print, copy, scan, fax? How well do you share? Nissan, who reminds you to ship the way you move through the world. Heineken, it's all about the beer. Heineken. And by Ford, built for Chicago, built for the road ahead. Griffey's going to be safe as he gets back to third. Oy vey. That was ugly to watch. Five runs in the eighth inning did the Cubs in this afternoon. 9-6 is the final as the Reds earn a split in this four-game series. Hi, welcome to Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Joe's Crab Shack, alongside the quirky southpaw, Dan Plezak. I am Pat Boyle. Dan, uh, you want to make the wild card. You had the bats going. You have a future Hall of Famer on the mound. You have a 5-1 lead. You cannot lose a game like you did today. You know, we talked about this. We've talked about it for the last couple of weeks. It seems like when the Cubs take a couple of steps forward, they end up stumbling and taking two or three steps in the wrong direction. And they're running out of room as far as the scheduling goes. This is, this is a team, the Cincinnati Reds, especially when you win the first two games of a series. It kind of reminds you of right before the All-Star break when the Cubs won the first two games against the series with the Pittsburgh Pirates, then dropped the remaining two games. These are types of games that you have to win. You have a lead, a 5-1 to one lead, then a 5-3 to three lead. They let things get away. Uh, there was a lot of things that you could point a finger and say, this is why they lost the game. This wasn't one area, the Navoa Bach. There were was, there was some missed opportunities, not getting advancing runners having second and third and one out and not scoring a run getting a chance to blow this game open you can't let those opportunities especially when you're playing a second division team like Cincinnati who for the most part they're laying around waiting to get beat and the longer you allow them to stay in a game and give them something to shoot for you, you run the risk especially when they have the last at bat in the ninth inning they didn't need it today but it was just a combination of things that the Cubs did not do well to point a finger at one thing I don't think would be fair there were a lot of things they didn't do very well today we have a lot to get to, but we start with our ExxonMobil game-changing moment. It came in that eighth inning. You know, after Roberto Novoa in the seventh got out of a bases loaded jam, this happens. How does that happen, Dan? Well, a lot of times what happens, especially with a young pitcher, the game is moving so fast. Roberto Novoa is just learning about being a relief pitcher, pitching in tough situations. And what happens a lot of times, you're so concerned about the, the pitch that you want to make. You might have something in your mind that in a certain count of one and two situation where you want to throw a slider and your mind is set on throwing a breaking ball you don't get that sign and, and you go into your wind up you start your wind up and it's not the pitch you want to throw and your mind was so set on throwing that pitch that instead of taking a second and stepping off you, you just go into your delivery. Debster came in after that he gave up uh, a hit that led to a few more runs. Uh, take us through that. Novoa has to come down, make a step, talk us through what exactly is a balk because people at home we, we see different variations of it, a flinch on the mound or a guy not coming to a complete stop. In that case, what exactly happened well, there? Any, any time that you're taking the signs from your catcher and you're on the mound and, and you're in a set position where it would be either with your hands at your, uh, down at your midsection or looking in to take the signs, when you nod to take the sign, and any time you begin to start your windup, that's considered starting your windup, whether it's a flinch of your head, uh, what you need to do there, and it's, sometimes it's very difficult, especially when you're a younger player, you're in a situation where the crowd's on their feet, there's a lot of noise, a lot of commotion going on, and you get a little distracted. So when you bend down and you start to stand up to start your delivery, even though his intention may have been that wasn't going to be his delivery, but when you're in a set position, you take the sign and you either stand up or move your hands. It constitutes the beginning of your delivery, and, and it, it, was a, it actually happened about 15 seconds before that ball caught. He did it twice, got away with it the first time. Unfortunately, he was caught doing it the well, second probably time. probably the Reds dugout yelled out there to tell the Blue to look for that. I mean, they probably well, saw what you saw and, and, and tipped off the, the umpires to look for it. 
by the same token, the Cubs are, are, are analyzing the situation, Rothschild and company, and they got to say to themselves, wait, he's doing that, maybe someone needs to go out to the mound, calm him down. Is, is well, that... I, I think what happens is anytime what you're seeing, the, the shortcomings right now of this bullpen is the fact that the, the effective pitchers have been young pitchers. And Roberto Novoa, this is probably the first game he's been in in a bases loaded, nobody out situation. Michael Wirtz, you can go on and on down the line. When this team began uh, playing in April, I don't think that anybody imagined Novoa, Wirtz, and Ullman were going to be the main cogs in this right. bullpen. Now you're getting to a point of the season now where you're expecting these guys to perform like guys that have pitched for six or seven years. The mistakes that they're making right now, those are mistakes that happen, but unfortunately they're, they're, they're magnified when you're playing on a team like the Cubs where the expectations is high. And right now the learning curve, the, the schedule is running thin. It's time for them to start winning games. And every game they lose right now, there's they're such a, a five, six team log jam for that wild card that every game is a big game that you fall behind. And they can ill afford to fall any further behind than they are right now because basically they played themselves into a spot where they're going to have to win seven out of ten and at six out of ten at the worst in this next stretch for the remainder of the season because of the way they played in April and May. And that's tough. They've got St. Louis right now on the horizon. But for every blunder, like we saw there with Naboa, there were some brilliant plays in this game. It was pretty much a microcosm of their season. In the seventh inning, a bases loaded jam. Naboa is on the mound, and Jerry Hairston Jr. came through with an amazing play in center field. Now, this is when you think the momentum is about to switch. Rich Aurelia hits a soft one off the end of the bat, and a terrific play by Jerry Hairston. Got a little bit of a late break on the ball. That's a tough play because you see a big swing and the ball's not hit that hard. A terrific play. And then I think that the thing that hurt is right after that is where you have to come back and the momentum is back on your side and you have to find a way to knock the Cincinnati Reds out, to bunch something together in the next inning. Because I, as I said earlier in the show, bad teams are waiting around to get beat. And if, if you have men on base, second and third, nobody out, first and third, one out, every opportunity that they give you to score a run, you have to take advantage of it and bury them early. And then you make them go to their bullpen for the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning. And it's not a matter of righties against righties or lefties against lefties. It's a matter of them trying to get through the next four innings of a ball game. Situational pitching on a bad team goes out the window. Harris to the Naperville product, uh, primarily a, a second baseman, an infielder by trade. Do you see the tools out of him to be an everyday center fielder in I mean, Major League I Baseball? Mean, he's, he's, he's learning on the job right now, and, and unfortunately with the problems that Corey Patterson had in a perfect world, if Corey Patterson could get himself straightened out offensively, whether it be a number one hitter, a four hitter, a six hitter, or an eight hitter, to learn some patience at the plate, to get pitches that he can hit, to lay off the high fastballs. Until that it happens, Jerry Harrison seems like the alternative right now. He's, he's greatly given this offense a boost that it desperately needed to get guys on base for Lee and Ramirez. Uh, he's learning on the job. It's very difficult to be an infielder most of your career and now thrown into probably the toughest position to play in the outfield in center field. Reds take this game 9-6. to six. They earn the split in the four-game series. As you mentioned at the top of the show, this was a group loss. There were, there were fingers to be pointed all over the place. They missed a great opportunity in the fifth inning to add to their lead. Michael Barrett leads off that inning and doubles to left. How many times in your career, 18 years, have you seen two guys go back-to-back -back with doubles and yet not plate a run? This was a very unique, and we, we talked about this early when the game was going on. I can't remember the last time that you see back-to-back -back doubles and it's second and third and nobody out. Unfortunately, uh, this was a tough ball to read off the bat when Jeremy Burnitz hit this ball. And, and the one thing that you have to cut Michael Barrett a break here, he's playing a little bit banged up right now, whether it's the hip problem that he's having. I know he's having a difficult time running. And so for him to get a good jump on a ball like that or to score on a ball like that might be asking a lot more. Then, and then Jerry Harrison uh, hits this ball right back to the mound here. And, and you're wondering why, why didn't he read this ball or score? When you're not 100% and running at 100% of your ability, you know, that's a tough play. The last thing you want to do is... That was the way. The last thing you want to do is run yourself into an out, being out by 15 feet, at least to give somebody else behind you a chance. And unfortunately, Greg Maddox hit into not, the Not Maddox's play. fault, because he had an RBI. He did a nice job earlier in the game, faking the bunt and then slapping one down the right side. But now let's take a look at the Feldco pitching facts from today's game. The future Hall of Famer entered 6K shy of 3,000. Uh, he ended up with four K's today, so now two shy of three grand in his career. 
it, typical what we've seen of Greg in, in recent weeks. I mean, he's not the pitcher that he was with the Atlanta Braves eight or nine years ago. You know, he's not the type of pitcher that's going to be a 115, 120 inning pitcher. But what he does do, he consistently gives you a chance to win. He's had several games now that he's come out of a game and the bullpen has let a lead slip away. He pitched well enough to win today on a hot, muggy day. Unfortunately, the bullpen wasn't able to carry the load from the sixth inning to the end of the game. Check this out. Maddox next scheduled start will be Tuesday night at home against the Giants. Mad Dog won his 300th career game, by the way, against the same Giants team. He's had a terrific career, and, and, and to put in perspective of what he's been able to do, it is so hard to strike out 1,000 guys, let alone 3,000 guys, and the durability that he's been able to maintain in the streak of 15 wins for consecutive years is something that is, you, you can't even begin to appreciate it until you look around baseball and see that very few guys have even come close to touching that. All right, as we go to break, let's check out our Cubs poll question on this day. Who's the greatest starting pitcher in the last three decades? Your choices, Greg Maddox, Nolan Ryan, The Rocket, The Big Unit, or E, Steve Carlton. Go on to ComcastSportsNet.com, click on the Chicago link, and vote away. We'll have results later in the show. Introducing a conventional oil that totally defies convention. New Mobile Clean 5000. The first oil enhanced with a high endurance formula. The only one guaranteed to protect for 5,000 miles. Mobile Clean 5000. The oil that's changing oil. Come on, Joe! What's kicking in the kitchen? Yeah. 40 shrimp for $12.99. Scampi seared. Coconut crusted. Flame grilled. Golden fried. 40 shrimp for only $12.99. Joe's new platter is bigger and better than ever. Only Joe's Crab Shack does 40 shrimp for $12.99. It's shrimply irresistible. That's right, 40 scrumptious shrimp for only $12.99. There are thousands of faces at Robert Morris College, and behind each one of them is a dream. Do you see yourself? Choose your passion and you can graduate in three years or less. There are hundreds of opportunities behind our doors. One for every dream. Your dream. Accessible, affordable, attainable. Robert Morris College. Real college for the real world. Trying to find that new or used car in Chicago using the newspaper? You must have a lot of time on your hands. Oh, Chicago, there has to be a better way. There is. It's vhicks.com. Research your next car, get a free price quote, and find a local dealer. At vhicks.com, all roads lead to happiness. vhicks.com, so easy and no mess. vhicks.com, Chicagoland's roadmap to the automotive world. This summer, the guys try to outprank the girls. Think you have what it takes to behave badly? Test your pranking skills on Oxygen.com. Best experience with Comcast high-speed internet. Plus, enter to win a summer house for a week in the ultra posh New York hotspot, The Hamptons. Watch girls behaving badly. Revenge of the Boys, July 25th on Oxygen. live tonight at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Time now for a trip down memory lane, courtesy of Joe's Crab Shack. On this date back in 1923, the Phillies scored a dozen runs in the sixth frame to beat the Cubs 17-4. And welcome back to Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Joe's Crab Shack. Alongside Dan Plezak, I am Pat Boyle. The Reds take care of the Cubs 9-6 the final as they get a split in this series. Let's head back to the ballpark to hear from the guys who call the game right here on Comcast Sportsnet, Len Casper and Bob Brenly. Well, the series started out in such promising fashion as the Cubs won the first two games. The Reds won last night, but the Cubs still had a chance for the series win today, and they had a 5-1 lead. Unfortunately, the bullpen could not hold up again today. 9-6 the final. Reds with five big runs in the eighth inning, and 
Bob, the bullpen struggling the last two days. Twelve runs allowed by the Cubs relievers the last two games. Yeah, and that's really discouraging. I mean, uh, the starters have been so-so, but the bullpen has to come in and get those big outs when you really need them. I think the thing that was uh, a little disappointing more than anything else was the fact the Cubs didn't play nine innings today. It was very apparent that toward the latter part of the ball game they lost their focus, they lost their concentration, they made some silly errors out there, they threw the wrong bases, and uh, the Reds just kept grinding and turned it into a victory. And Greg Maddox came up a couple of strikeouts short of 3,000. He had four today, went five innings, but a chance for 3,000. He's two away, and it'll come against the Giants Tuesday night. Well, it'll come against the Giants Tuesday or uh, at some point in the future. It's inevitable Maddox is going to get that 3,000. It's unfortunate it didn't happen here today, but uh, once again, I think the big story from this ball game today was uh, you said that win a ball game today, win a series, go to St. Louis with a lot of momentum, feeling good about yourselves. But to let this ball game get away today, this was a crushing defeat. And the Cardinals coming up this weekend in St. Louis, and the matchup tomorrow night should be a dandy. It'll be Chris Carpenter for the Cardinals, Carlos Zambrano for the Cubs. Our next telecast here on Comcast Sportsnet, Monday night from Wrigley against the Giants at 7 o'clock. All right, guys, nice job. As always, uh, they said it best, Dan. I mean, it started out so promising, winning those first two games, and then, you know, you're, you're going to stumble at times. Obviously, a big letdown with Wood yesterday, but you know, today, again, one of those games that if you really want to make a move, this is a team you have to beat as we take a look at the series stats. There's no question you're talking about two teams right now, two good offensive teams playing in an offensive-oriented ballpark. Anytime you jump out to a lead like the Cubs were able to do today, to get a 5-1 to one lead, then 5-3 to three going into the fifth inning, you feel pretty good about your chances. But as I said earlier in the show, when you're playing teams that are sub-500 teams that are struggling, if you give them an opportunity to believe they can win a game, it seems like it comes back and it haunts you. When you have guys in scoring position, do the best you can of trying to get them in. And when you have innings where, as a pitcher, you retire the first two hitters, make sure you try to keep the momentum going, have a 1-2-3 inning. They gave them an opportunity, and the Reds knocked the door down and won the game. Well, the Cubs had some momentum going early on in this game. They were starting to get to Eric Milton in the fourth inning. It was the bottom of the order that started things off. And we've kind of seen that in the last, say, two weeks, even before the All-Star break, the bottom of the order generating some runs in this instance it's Jeremy Burnett that's singling to center and getting things going followed by Arani Sedania double to right. What do you think of Arani Sedania? I tell you what he's a terrific looking young player. I mean he has what a lot of young players need. His experience he needs experience. He needs playing time. He handles himself very well. His body action, his mannerisms are very good. He looks comfortable playing shortstop he has the element of speed that he can bring and he's like like all young players they need to learn on the job and this is a difficult situation when you're getting to play on a team where the expectations are high the 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 margin for error is cut down you're expected to be a little bit more advanced in your play but I like what I've seen so far from Ronnie Cedeno Todd Walker had a great series three home runs all against left-handed pitchers what does that tell you should he be in the lineup and not be platooning when there's a lefty on the bump I mean that's that's a fine line especially when you're talking about guys that have played for eight nine ten years you get into this point of the season it's getting very hot very muggy very humid especially playing at Cincinnati and even at home at Wrigley Field you need to spell him every once in a while to give him a break I think one thing that he's shown up to this point is what he's brought with him since his college days at LSU this guy was born to hit he can hit righties lefties and the thing that impresses me the most about him is he hits quality pitching. He very rarely gives at bats away. And when he's coming up in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, when when an opposing manager makes a pitching change and brings in a tough left-handed pitcher, he has quality at bats. He doesn't give very many at bats away. We had a chance to see uh, Ken Griffey Jr. the last four days on a uh, inning by inning basis. Your thoughts on where Griff is to compare to where he was, you know, before all the injuries. And we hear about the trade rumors. Is he somebody that you would say, yeah, come on over? Or do you think because of the baggage that he brings to the equation, you'd rather say, good luck, play for somebody uh, else? I think he has a lot of good baseball left. And, and to compare where Ken Griffey was, unfortunately, I guess, I was able to play against Ken Griffey many years when he was with the Seattle Mariners. There was nobody in the game at that time that could do what he could do. He could play a absolutely marvelous center field he could cover ground to his left to his right over his head he was a highlight reel not there, only today. not only that what he brought to the plate with his power numbers he could steal a base and i will say this after watching this four game series he is a much improved 
player than he was in April and May. The first go around when they played the Cubs, his bat looked slow. He didn't like it. He was getting as good a jumps to balls in the outfield. I think right now he's starting to put it back together and get healthy. His legs are strong. And could he help somebody? There is no doubt that he could help somebody. And I think a shot that Ken Griffey could get, not only for himself, going to a contending team right now might be the best thing for him to get him refocused back on, which is the main thing, winning baseball games. It's, uh, you know, everything looked like it would be a perfect fit when he went to Cincinnati. Hometown kid returning to where his dad played. Uh, but we've seen in these small to medium markets, when you chunk uh, a third or a fourth of your payroll to one guy, uh, we saw it in Texas with uh, A-Rod, it doesn't seem to work. There's resentment, things like that. He almost, when you make that kind of money, needs to go to a, a big city, a Yankee, a Cub situation where they're going to spend a lot of money, but they're also going to have superstars around him so that you're not leaning completely on Ken Griffey. I think one of the things that general managers in baseball, executives in general, as your fear is when you have the opportunity to acquire a Ken Griffey and Alex Rodriguez to get those kind of players and to keep them, and, and you're going to pay them dearly. They take up a big chunk of your salary. The problem you run into is, is what has happened at times when the team starts to go south or you can't afford to put the parts around them or their game starts to fade, whether it's due to injury or lack of talent or, you know, as you get older, the things that were easy for you to do become more difficult. Now it becomes hard to move that contract, and the only teams that can take on a contract like that are large market clubs like the Cubs, the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Mets. And unfortunately, if they have an alternative in center field or in the outfield, there's really no place that you can send Ken Griffey Jr. Well, coming up, we're going to take a look at the Kerry Wood situation, get the latest on his injury. As we go to break, let's check out our Cubs poll question one more time. Who's the greatest starting pitcher the last three decades? Greg Maddox, Nolan Ryan, The Rocket, The Big Unit, or Steve Carlton? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com, go to the Chicago link, and then to the Cubs page and vote. Final question, a six-letter word for free installation. Falco! Get free installation at Feldco. Save thousands on top quality Feldco replacement windows with no payments until winter. Get Feldco quality and installed free. It's an easy call. Feldco's the right answer. Free installation ends July 31st. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866-4-FELDCO. It's a wonderful world. I'm just walking on air. Talk of heaven on earth. I've got more than my share. Haven't got a care. Happy Rico dependability day. moves your ideas forward. It's a wonderful Changes world. Changes too. Loving wonderful. Chicagoans love their pizza. That's why you come to Giordano's. Some for 30 years now. We use only the finest ingredients to make Giordano's famous stuffed pizza. Our equally famous thin crust pizza. Plus salads, pastas, sandwiches, and more. Come on into Giordano's and celebrate 30 great years with us. Giordano's famous stuffed pizza. We made it good. You made it famous. Right now, Ford invites you to join the Ford Family Plan and pay the same low prices our employees and their families pay. Until August 1st, you'll get our discounts on the entire family of Ford cars in stock, including the five-star safety-rated Ford Freestyle with car-like highway gas mileage. Now get a Freestyle for just $22,556. That's over $3,100 in savings on the sporty, versatile Ford Freestyle. No hassles, no gimmicks. Visit your local Ford store today and welcome to the family. This is a Chicago institution, and this is a Chicago institution. Chicago institution, Chicago institution. Since 1959, it's Danley for the finest custom-built garages. Now you can own a Danley and get $1,000 off any size Danley garage. Just call 773 Garages right now and get $1,000 off the custom-built Danley of your choice. Chicago institution, Chicago institution. All right, let's check out the pitching matchup tomorrow. The Coors Light, cold hard facts. It'll be Big Z's and Brown going up against 
Oh, by the way, the NL leader in victories, Chris Carpenter. We saw him at the All-Star game last week. And he is a quality pitcher. I know him from the days he and Roy Halladay, the two young guns coming up in the Toronto Blue Jay organization, has had a lot of injuries this year. He stayed healthy, and he is having a Cy Young type of year. Zimbrano's been pitching well as of late. Uh, July 17th against Pittsburgh. Gave up just five hits, eight strong, one unearned run in that game against the Bucks. So what have you seen from Zimbrano as of late? I think he's kind of, the, I thought the three or four starts prior to this last one, the wheels seemed to be coming away a little bit on Carlos. He was having a tough time locating his fastball, having a lot of deep counts and deep pitch innings where he was 65, 70 pitches into the fourth and fifth inning. But he seemed to right the ship in his last start, a little bit more under control. And as we know, he's such an emotional pitcher that if he can keep his emotions in check early and, and throw and command the strike zone, he's the type of guy that can go seven, eight innings and throw 75, 80 pitches. And he's one of the few pitchers in either league that can go out there with one pitch, a power sinker, and dominate. Well, it was disturbing news last night. Kerry Wood did not come out in the fourth inning. We're hearing right shoulder inflammation. Basically, that is it. Not saying you're a doctor, but certainly have had a lot of experience in this game. It's, it's a problem he's had uh, reoccurring. Your thoughts on what this means, especially coming off an outing that he didn't need to go the full distance. He had a ton of run support in the last game, only went like five innings. I mean, this, this was really a surprise, not only to myself, but I'm sure a lot of Cub fans. The three or four starts prior to this game last night in Cincinnati, I thought he was throwing terrific, a lot more under control, didn't have one of those stretches where he would go three or four hitters, 14, 15 pitches, where it looked like he was having a difficult time, a lot of balls up and away, a lot of balls down in the dirt. He looked really in control of himself physically, not a lot of pitches getting away. And last night, it, it would really surprise me. But I go back to what I, I've said a few times. It's very difficult when you don't have a full spring training. Uh, what he and Mark Pryor have been through, you can throw in all the simulated games and the minor league rehab assignments, but there is nothing like pitching every five days in the big leagues. And they've had to play catch up with Kerry Wood. They've had to shut him down twice. And anytime you start missing turns and missing 10, 14, 15 days of not throwing, it, it's not like riding a bike. You're just going to jump right back in and every five days take the ball and be the kind of pitcher that they need him, him to be and the kind of pitcher he is. He is never going to be a control freak type pitcher like Greg Maddox. He is a power pitcher. He's going to have high pitch counts. Uh, I, the one thing that I disagree with some people, it is extremely hard to take a guy's mechanics after he's pitched in the minor leagues and pitched a couple of years in the big leagues. Every pitcher has a flaw, whether it's throwing across your body, your arm angle is not high enough. But the natural way that he throws, he's a power pitcher, and it's almost impossible to take a guy at this point in, of his career and totally reconstruct his mechanics. It's too difficult to do. Well, th that's fine, and I know every pitcher has a flaw, but if that flaw leads to disabled us, I mean, you were fortunate enough to never go on the DL in your career, and we've talked about this in the past. A lot, some of that's luck. I mean, you, you didn't take a, a Mark Pryor ball off the elbow or what have you. But if, if his mechanics are leading to the problems in the shoulder and the fact that he can't go out there on a consistent basis, is there some fine tweaking or something they can do to besides medication and, and the different things they do is to treat it off the field to get him to where he can go on a consistent basis? I, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs inside the clubhouse of what's going on or what has happened, but I can tell you this from experience. Anytime you go into a spring training and have problems in the beginning of spring training, the end of spring training, I think more than anything what he needs is he needs some rest to let that area calm down. Unfortunately, you're getting into the meat and potatoes point of this season right now, and you can ill afford to say we're going to shut him down for four weeks to 100% make sure that he's healthy. But then you have to make up for those four weeks of time, and there's not time for that right now. So the Cubs as an organization, it's frustrating for everybody, but there's a fine line of trying to send a guy out out there when he's not a hundred percent now there's a difference between not being a hundred percent and pitching when you may hurt yourself and, and the last thing you want to do is jeopardize anybody's career and I know Kerry's taking a lot of knocks for he, he's, he's spending a lot of time on a disabled list but I know this there's nothing more that he'd like to do than be the pitcher that everybody expects him to be so tell me what the mood is like on that flight down to, to St. Louis you're playing your, your arch enemy in the division uh, one of your best pitchers we don't know how long he's going to be out and oh by the way you just split with a very mediocre team in Cincinnati. I mean, you hate to say it, but this was almost one of those games that this has happened 
time and time and time again with this team this year. It started in April where it seemed like as soon as they start to get on a nice four or five game winning streak, a favorable schedule, they have a miserable homestand, have trouble in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning with the bullpen. They fix that problem. They get wood. They get prior back. In this game today, this was a very tough game, especially going into a big three-game series in St. Louis. Hey, let's check out our poll results as uh, we find out whether or not you think the greatest starting pitcher was in the last 30 years. Your choices were Nolan, Roger, Greg Maddox, 43.5% say you like the Nolan Express on the bump. You agree with this? I'm a Roger Clements fan. I haven't played with him for two years in Toronto and still to be able to do what he's doing now in his 40s. There's nobody that has played that is doing as a power pitcher when they came in and the ultimate power pitcher on their way out. You spent a lot of time with Roger in Toronto. You guys uh, experienced the hockey scene coming up next on Comcast Sports at the NHL Players Association. They discuss the new collective bargaining agreement that will be announced officially tomorrow. That's going to do it for the quirky left-hander, Dan Plezak. I'm Pat Boyle. We'll make a little line change and talk some hockey after this. shrimp for $12.99, scampi seared, coconut crusted, flame grilled, golden fried, 40 shrimp for only $12.99. Joe's new platter is bigger and better than ever. Only Joe's Crab Shack does 40 shrimp for $12.99. It's shrimply irresistible. That's right, 40 scrumptious shrimp for only $12.99. Gotta go eat at Joe's. I'm proud to build trucks and SUVs to a higher standard. Professional grade. I'm proud to make an SUV with the tightest turning radius. Best V8 fuel economy. Most horsepower in its class. I'm proud to innovate. And I'm proud to offer something we've never done before. Our very own employee discount. You pay what we pay. Not a cent more. Get an 05 Yukon two-wheel drive SLE for just $29,208 with your employee discount. Hurry. Program ends August 1st. How about catch 35 where Chicago meets the ocean shore? So how about catch 35? To the right, four right, left, left, more left, back to the right, more right. What you wish you could do in real life. Left. Now you can do at the all new completely redesigned vehicles.com. The all new vehicles.com. Roadmap to the automotive world. At Comcast High Speed Internet, we're always bringing new enhancements to your door. Like the best online music experience. Exclusive content just for kids. News, sports, and entertainment videos that play in an instant. And upgrades to our broadband speed that let you do more with all the features included in your service. Comcast, the number one high speed internet provider in America. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. Review live tonight at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Good afternoon, everyone. Pat Boyle in our Comcast Sportsnet studios in downtown Chicago. We are talking hockey on this steamy July day in the Windy City. I am joined by Lester Munson, our legal analyst, and uh, Jim Blaney from the Blackhawks. And we'll get to your thoughts on exactly what the players are going to say at the CBA. But uh, today in Toronto, the NHL Players Association, they held a press conference following the outcome of the players' ratification vote in the new collective bargaining agreement. Over 200 NHL players were present at the talks. Let's take you in there live now and listen in to this NHLPA address. I'll begin the press conference briefly, and then uh, Gary will have some comments, and then we'll be glad to entertain questions, etc. Let me begin by saying that on behalf of the NHLPA Executive Committee, and the team player representatives and the general membership, I'm pleased to announce 
that the NHLPA members voted today and ratified the new collective bargaining agreement. If the NHL Board of Governors ratifies the agreement, as we expect they will tomorrow, the hockey world will soon be able to celebrate the return of NHL hockey. I'd like to thank all the members of the negotiating committee who are here today for their dedication and hard work. The process has been long and challenging. And I know that the membership is appreciates the time and effort that you've put into the negotiation process. I also want to welcome Gary and Bill and thank you for joining us today on behalf of the league. During the last year or so, we clearly had differences on many issues. But we both understood the importance of reaching a fully negotiated agreement, which we were able to accomplish over the last few months. And I must say with full credit to both Bill and Ted for reaching this result. We look forward to starting fresh with this new agreement. We're fully committed to the new deal and we anticipate great success for the game as we go forward. Most importantly, I want to thank the fans for their patience through a winter with no hockey. We pledge our full commitment to you as we go forward. We're optimistic and eager to get to work. Without further ado at this time, Gary, I'd like to invite you to share your comments. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, thank you all for coming this afternoon, and thank you for inviting us to join you here today. Bill and I are here uh, to first congratulate the players on ratifying the new collective bargaining agreement, and more importantly, to thank uh, the membership of the union, all the NHL players, the greatest athletes in the world, their union, the officers, Bob and Ted, the executive, and Trevor Linden uh, for the incredible job and effort that they put out to help achieve this result. We stand here at a point where we can now together look forward in partnership to take our great game to spectacular heights and we can do it for the good of the game and most importantly for our fans. And that's what we are together in partnership committed to doing. Obviously, I'm somewhat limited in terms of what I can say today because the board has yet to ratify we meet tomorrow, uh, but I am optimistic that we will bring this promptly to a successful conclusion so that we can go together and get this game and the attention on this game back where it belongs on the ice. We'll now start with questions. Please state your name and of media affiliation because we have people participating via conference call today. Appreciate it. Hi, Brian Coles, the OWGR in Buffalo. Uh, do you guys feel that this agreement will upheld that competitive balance that the league is looking for so a small market team like Buffalo can have that same advantages that some of the top markets will have? Uh, from our standpoint, uh, we believe that the agreement will give us 30 stable, healthy, competitive teams and that the fans in all of our markets, markets like Buffalo, the so-called smaller markets, uh, will have uh, every opportunity when the season begins to think they've got a shot at winning the cup. I would add to that that the, in the past there's been various ranges of payrolls amongst the clubs in the National Hockey League and this new agreement sets control points upper and lower limits and to the extent that those control points operate to bring teams together um, in the fashion that they're intended to uh, that it'll take uh, a measure away and create a more competitive environment for those teams like you mentioned in Buffalo who may feel that uh, you know, they were at somewhat of a disadvantage. It's, the measure is not necessarily how much you spend but it's also how you spend it but the real measure too is you know we want to make sure that the teams together and the players together are comfortable with the environment and that this new agreement and with the level of uh, support that it received from the membership yesterday and today we know that we have that going forward from our perspective. Uh, it's a question for both Gary and Bob. It's uh, Pierre Lebrun from the Canadian Press. Uh, yeah. This CBA does appear to have uh, more of a link between the two sides than ever in terms of being partners on all kinds of levels. 
Can the two of you individually? She went to DeVry University. At DeVrySuccess.com, she found their free guide to the best ways to pay for college and get into today's business world, which is exactly the place DeVry prepares you for. So call or log on now to DeVrySuccess.com for your free guide to the best ways to pay for college and get dressed for success. DeVry, where success stories 